following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. IndyCar World Series is proud to present, live from Vancouver, the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver. Well, another great day here on the West Coast. It's windy like yesterday. That should not be a factor as usual. A huge crowd on hand, temperature 20 degrees. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Unser, absolutely ideal conditions to go motor racing. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Good to have my regular partner with me, three-time Indy 500 champion Bobby Unser. Hard to believe it's our seventh year together here on the West Coast, and I have never seen the series this close coming to Vancouver. It is so competitive. You know, one of the ways you can tell is just look at all the drivers, these young lions that we know exist, getting fines, getting problems, warnings, all these types of things for driving too hard, too aggressively. That means competition. It's happening for a reason. Well, you talk about those young lions, people like Tracy, Ribeiro, Zanardi, Fine, Moore, Warren. How about the veterans? Let's not forget a couple of guys that have dominated here and have done pretty well this season. Well, dominated for sure. Little Al Michael is an example. Ray Hall, little Al Michael won every race that there is so far. Michael, four race wins this year. Not much in the championship. Little Al, very much still in the championship. So that tells you how competitive this thing is. We're looking forward to a good afternoon. Happy to have a colleague of yours from ABC Sports, Jack Aroot, working the pits this afternoon with Ken Daniels. Jack standing by with a pole sitter. Three consecutive poles, five poles for the season, more than anybody else. Alex, how do you do it? <laughs> I don't know. I eat spinach every morning. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, it's a result of a very hard work for, for, from me, from the team, Mona and all the guys. We've been working hard, uh, we know we have a very good package and it uh, doesn't happen every year that you have uh, such a situation, so I want to wanna get advantage of it and uh, we still have two races to go, I want to score the maximum, maximum points. Now your teammate Jimmy Vassar, right in the middle of the points chase, does that affect the pressure that's put on you in any way? No, no because Jimmy is too, is too far ahead, the only thing I can do is uh, go for my best, score as many points as I can. And I think we start the weekend in the right way. We score already one for the polls, so uh, we're starting from the best spot for the race, and hopefully we can score some more, some more point in in the race itself. How about this course itself? How tough is it to get around traffic? Well, the course, you know, when you go around and qualify, is very, very challenging, and it's very difficult to put a good lap together. So it is really difficult. But when you go around in traffic is so sure that it's almost impossible to have a clear lap. I mean, this morning in the warm-up, in 30 minutes, I had just one clear lap. Otherwise, I was stuck in traffic all the time, and people try to make the clear in front of them, so they slow down on the last two corners. So you think it's clear, but then you come around in the last two corners, there is somebody that goes slow, and he doesn't want to let you go, because otherwise you're going to be on his way on the following lap. So it's, uh, it's, it's difficult, but... Hopefully in the race nobody is going to try to make it clear in front of them uh, because everybody will go for the best. Every position does count in the race and nobody gives way. All right, Bobby, Jack and Alex talking about it being a tough course to pass on. Who does a favor? Well, I think uh, obviously it would be little Al and Michael, but they have a lot of experience here. But don't forget Ray Hall now. He's been on the podium. He's qualified really well. He wants another win really bad, Brian. Well, those are veterans. We just saw a rookie in Alex Zanardi. Hey, up next, folks, we will talk with a pride and joy. Speaking of rookies, the pride and joy of Maple Ridge, British Columbia. We sit down with Greg Moore when we return live to Vancouver and coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver. And car number four will be driven by the pole sitter, the leading rookie, Alessandro Sinardi. Speaking of rookies, there's no question the most sought-after man in town this week has been Maple Ridge's Greg Moore. He drives the Zamboni at the World Cup. He's on the billboards, he's on radio, television, in the newspapers. Tremendous pressure. And I had a chance to speak with Greg Moore late Friday afternoon.
Just east of Vancouver is the community of Maple Ridge, the sports star capital of Canada. Home to Larry Walker, once at Expo, now pounding homers for the Colorado Rockies. To Don Cherry's favorite, Cam Neely, the rock-hard stalwart of the Boston Bruins. They both call Maple Ridge home, as does the fastest man around. Greg Moore, a driving phenom since childhood, and now a meteoric star on the Indy racing scene. Greg, the crowd at your garage is uh, by far and away the biggest. Talk to me about the pressure of coming home. Uh, you ride the Zamboni at the Canada-Russia hockey game. It's Greg Moore Day in Vancouver. Does it get to you? Uh, it's, um, I think, if anything, it encourages me because I mean, you see all these people standing out here. They're all cheering for me, and I mean, uh, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm the hometown guy, and everyone wants me to do well. But, you know, like I said earlier, once I get in the race car, I have to realize that my job is to try and win the race. It doesn't matter if I'm in Rio or if I'm in Vancouver, I have to try and win. Hey, G, when you feel these tires have had it, you come back in and we'll give you some new ones, okay? Don't thrash around out there needlessly. Do you want, want any changes, G, or you want to leave it alone? Just leave it, let me grab it. Everything is just a learning experience this year. I mean, be it with racing wheel to wheel with Alan Jr. and Emerson Fittipaldi and Robbie Gordon, Paul Tracy, just racing wheel to wheel with these guys because they're the best in the world. Uh, from that all the way down to getting used to the horsepower. I mean, we're coming to Vancouver for the first time. Is this all a dream to you? I mean, here we are standing, the mountains in the background, your home in British Columbia. Did you ever think there'd be a day with crowds like this, driving a competitive Indy car in the fight for Rookie of the Year? Uh, I someday dream that it would be like this, but now realistically, you know, it's a lifelong dream when I was 10 years old to say, you know, I'm going to have an Indy car, I'm going to be driving for the players team, I'm going to be having all these fans in Vancouver screaming for me and cheering for me. You, you realistically can't ever think that's going to happen. Moore's dream has indeed become reality. There's more madness in British Columbia, and there's no doubt about who the fans want to win most. How come? Well, he's a hometown boy. Yeah, he's brave. He's really brave. <laughs> he's calm and he's cool, and he never, uh, you know, kind of loses his cool. Ah, oh, well, we'll be cheering for Greg Moore this weekend for sure. Yeah. I'm lucky enough that you know, I, mean, I get to come home. I get to race friends, my family, my girlfriend get to come out and it's, uh, it's a whole new deal. And several weeks ago, Moore, of course, involved in that horrific crash with Emerson Fittipaldi. Up next, we'll move from a rookie Moore to the veteran from Brazil, Ken Daniels, visits with Emerson Fittipaldi in Miami. That's when we continue from here in Vancouver, live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver. There's Michael Andretti's car, four wins this season, two wins in six previous races here in Vancouver. On July 28th at the Michigan International Speedway, Emerson Fittipaldi survived a fiery crash that ended his season, put his future in doubt. Last week, CBC's Ken Daniels went down to Miami to talk to Fittipaldi about the past and a look ahead to the future. You have to be driving right on the edge. If you are too brave, you overdo it and you can crash. And if you start backing off a little too much, you'll never win the race. You finish second, third, or fourth. And uh, the final line is, is a difficult one to achieve. It's consistent. Emerson Fittipaldi has always been a winner, from Formula One to reigning over Brazilian motorsport with the brilliant Ayrton Senna, to Indy 500 champion on two occasions. Being a racer was something Emma was born to become. I remember when I was five years old and uh, I went to Interlagos where I have the Brazilian Grand Prix track and my father was working on the radio station and he had a, a tower that he would broadcast the race from top of the tower and my mother uh, put myself and my brother she designed a circle on the ground 
And she said, you guys cannot move away from here. And I was above the S corner in Interlagos, a beautiful corner. And I watched the whole afternoon the, the cars going by. And that on, on my mind, I said, that's what I want to do in life. I want to be a racing driver. And uh, by that time, I was already committed to be a racing I was going to do anything to be a racing driver. and Fittipaldi making a good move and Boy, at the oh, front of battle he's he touched. he touched into the wall that touch sent Fittipaldi on a 200 mile per hour crash crushing his neck nearly paralyzing him it's such a fine line racers travel I did a very good start I rolled to turn one and Greg Moore who was on the outside of the front row moved on the inside and when uh, my teammate Olanza Jr. tried to pass him on the inside and he never saw what was coming on his outside. And I was already between one and two or three quarters of a car ahead of him. And then uh, he just touched my rear wheel with his right front and made me lost the back end. And in half a second, I was hitting the, the wall at incredible speed. If the replay is what it shows, someone hit us, and it just really perturbs me. While Hogan Penske boss Carl Hogan was livid about the racing line of Vancouver's Greg Moore, Emmo was more forgiving. Well, I, I hadn't talked to Greg, or he didn't call me after the crash, uh, but I'm sure uh, he never had intention uh, to hit me and, and make my car go to the wall. But I think he's driving over a little too aggressive. He has, uh, he has incredible talent, natural talent. He's a great young driver. and. I think what happened was uh, it was a bad circumstance that he should try to be a little more careful in the oval track. Fittipaldi's damage was extensive. A broken vertebrae, a collapsed lung, a narrow escape. I was very, very lucky. I mean, God was there and said, well, I must have stayed a little longer down there. <laughs> it's not your time yet. And I, I'm, I'm very spiritual. I believe that you know, I have a very strong help. And uh, that's why I'm here talking to you. So perhaps God gave you a, a sign, do you think? Well, I think so. I, I have not made my mind yet. Uh, uh, I'm still very competitive. I still want to race, but it's going to depend on my recuperation the next two or three months to make up my final decision uh, what I'm going to do for the future. Fittipaldi's consistency has been amazing. The youngest man to win the Formula One title, he's been racing for more than a quarter of a century. He's really had two racing careers, F1 with 14 wins, then another 22 during the past 13 seasons in Indy cars. While his racing future may be unsettled, Emma will always be involved with cars. When I was eight years old in Sao Paulo, Brazil, my father at that time bought a baby blue Cadillac, Coupe de Ville. And recently, Emmo found such a car and brought it back to Miami, where he surprised his father, Wilson. To me, the Cadillac from the 50s means the, you know, the expression of architecture and design for the American industry in the 50s. I mean, that's a statement of design, a statement of art. Uh, it's a beautiful design car. Uh, you have to drive carefully, it's so smooth, so nice, this car is beautiful. The weather like today is fantastic. You know? and, go down to South Beach. Unfortunately, I don't have the time today to go to South Beach, but uh, it feels comfortable, beautiful. That's my, the, the best toy I have. The final turn for home, the checker flag, and Emerson Fittipaldi has won his second Indianapolis 500. Forever linked to the winner's circle, Emmo now faces the reality of leaving racing behind. I love racing and all my life has been racing, dedicated to racing. I think it would be very difficult to say no in the future if I have to say no to racing. While Emerson Fittipaldi is such a great businessman and in business, he looks up to no man more than this man, Roger Penske. There's a hot rumor, Roger, that Emmo's going to take the Brahma beer sponsorship and open up his own team next year. What are your thoughts? Well, I don't really know that. Uh, I know Emmo has talked about uh, having a team for 1997. I think uh, that would be a great opportunity for him to show his experience, not only as a driver, but as a super businessman. As you know, he's been a great supporter of our team. and. Uh, 
Certainly, if he has that interest, uh, we'll certainly support him with our cars and our engines. Roger, good luck today. Thank you very much. Brian? All right, Ken, speaking of the great Roger Penske, up next, we'll talk with his number one driver, the man out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Al Unser Jr. We continue live. Back live in Vancouver, gentlemen, start your engines. The call will come in just a few seconds. As Bobby Unser said yesterday, there's no question certain drivers are suited to certain courses. Al Unser Jr. likes Long Beach. He loves Vancouver with four victories so far here. Meet Little Al, king of the West Coast. The checkered flag in the first Vancouver Molson Indy as wife Shelley celebrates Al Unser Jr. The streak begins in Canada and it continues in Canada. Al Unser Jr. will win the 1993 Molson Indy Vancouver. Here comes the checkered flag for Al Unser Jr. Jr. wins in Vancouver. It's official for the third time. There is the checkered flag as he raises his left fist in the air. Al Unser Jr. is the winner. It's the drive for five. Six starts in Vancouver. Four wins, three in a row. Whatever Al Unser Jr.'s season record before September, he loves coming to Vancouver. The people here are just, uh, they love racing. And when you come to venues, that the people genuinely love race and it excites me immensely. So. The two-time Indy champion isn't always the favorite here. Often he'll start far back on the grid, but little Al knows what it takes to win in Vancouver. You really have to have a lot of patience here if you're you know, going to go up through. If you get impatient and, and you start making moves, you know, the chance of you losing a wing or something like that are, are very, uh, very high. In pursuit of a third Indy title, he came here in second place, still with a mathematical chance of catching points leader Jimmy Vassar. But with a 21-point deficit on Vassar to make up and only two races left, it'll be tough. We don't have an awful lot of points for being at this time in the season. And, uh, you know, it just shows how competitive the season has gone. You know, we've been consistently in the top five or whatever, and... and and uh, the reason why we're second in points is because there's been a different winner. You know, there's, uh, there hadn't been one team or, you know, pretty much dominate the, the season. No! Alonzo Jr., that's that's the race leader, has lost oh, the engine. No. Can you believe this? Oh, no! Within sight of the check Just flag. coming up the hill. Roger Penske couldn't believe the last lap blow-up which cost Little Al and the team victory and gave Michael Andretti the win at Elkhart Lake. It was just one of those things that, uh, that broke in the engine and you know, you, you can't, uh, there was no human error there, it was just one of those things and so, you know, that's the way my year's been going. We've had a couple opportunities to uh, score victories and uh, Lady Luck just uh, went away from us right, at the, right on the last few laps. With time running out on the season, nerves are on the edge. Unser bumped with Parker Johnstone at Mid-Ohio and failed to finish. Then a raft of drivers drew fines for improper conduct at Elkhart Lake, something Unser feels India officials must handle. Oh, I really feel that uh, uh, cart officials have uh, are going to, you know, make their decisions and, and uh, start putting a stop to it because it has gotten a little bit out of hand and, and, uh, and uh, you know, it's going to take the, the officials to, uh, to calm everybody down. And again, some big fines, $40,000 to Tracy and Ribeiro, $20,000 to Zanardi, warnings to Moore and DeFerrin. We're all set for the opening ceremonies on this gorgeous Sunday afternoon in Vancouver. Here's the public address announcer, David Kincaid. Ladies and gentlemen, as we join CBC's live national coverage of the 7th Annual Molson Indy Vancouver, it's my pleasure to introduce Ken Daniels. Thank you very much, David. While CBC Sports has been uh, very proud to provide the host broadcast coverage for the Vancouver Molson Indy for the past seven years, not only in Canada, but to 140 countries worldwide. And to welcome you all here today, it is my pleasure to welcome the President 
Western Division, Molson Breweries, Mr. Blair Shire. Blair? Thank you, Ken. And on behalf of Molson Breweries, I'm very pleased to extend a warm welcome to all motor racing fans who have joined the excitement here at Concord Pacific Place and across Canada viewing on the CBC and TVA television networks. This is the fastest weekend of the year in beautiful British Columbia, and we're extremely proud and grateful that the citizens of this city and province enthusiastically support this weekend of racing and entertainment on the streets of Vancouver. We're especially pleased to announce that on Friday we welcomed our one millionth race fan over the seven year history of this event. Thank you one and all. The Bolton Indy Vancouver staff and the many volunteers will continue to work diligently on your behalf to ensure that this event continues to be recognized as among the best organized and most exciting race car, Indy race cars, Indy races. The Molson Indies, both Vancouver and Toronto, deliver very significant economic and social benefits to both cities, as well as portraying great images for these cities worldwide. Molson is pleased and fortunate that we, along with all of our partner sponsors, can provide this positive impact to the communities. So on behalf of all of us, may I extend best wishes to each of the IndyCar teams and drivers, the race officials, and all the course workers for a very safe and successful event. The PPG IndyCar World Series provides exceptional competition and driving skills, and among the world's best are our very own Canadians, Paul Tracy from West Hill, Ontario, Scott Goodyear from Toronto, and from Maple Ridge, British Columbia, currently the youngest driver in IndyCar racing, Greg Moore. Good luck to Paul, Scott, Greg, and all the drivers. Thank you. Blair, thank you. While the IndyCar Chief Steward is a former race driver and one of auto racing's most respected officials in the 17-year history of kart and IndyCar, Wally Dallenbach is the only person to have ever filled this very important position. And as Chief Steward, it is Wally's responsibility to run the races and to enforce the rules. His 15-year driving career was highlighted by a win back in 1973 at the California 500 and has given him the insight to handle this important job. Wally plans to retire from the Chief Steward position at the end of this season, and the Vancouver Molson Indy salutes Wally in his illustrious racing career by having him give us the four most famous words in auto racing. Uh, Wally, uh, just very briefly, what's your most exciting moment ever in this sport? Actually, it was my first win, uh, IndyCar win in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 1973. All right, let's count it down in five, four, three, two, one. Gentlemen, start your engines. There's the pole sitter, Alessandro Zanardi, who's been very hot of late, driving for Chip Ganassi. And Ganassi was a surprise, Bobby Unser, at the beginning of the season, a surprise in that his team performed so well, but it wasn't Zanardi. It was the youngster from California. Yeah, Jim, Jimmy Vassar, who's been really hot this year, but he didn't expect Zanardi, for example, to be the, his hottest driver at the end of the year because right now at most of the races, Zanardi, race for race, lap for lap, is faster than Vassar. So it's got to have Jimmy Vassar worked up a little bit too, you know. Well, I tell you what, Zanardi's won two of the last six races, victories in Portland, Oregon, and mid-Ohio. Now, Bobby, what they're going to do here is they will take three warm-up laps, and if they're lined up properly the third time by, they'll go racing. It is a 100-lap race. Now, if after the three warm-up laps to get the tires uh, in racing condition, they still are ordered to go around once more under the yellow, that will count in the 100-lap race total. So the car is now moving out on the Pacific Boulevard, which is the fastest portion of this race course. This race course, 1.78 miles around. Now let's look right now. That's the straightaway that we're sitting at. That's the front straightaway by the pits. This turn that we're seeing the cars go through right now is legally or at number one turn. Now remember, from the turn behind you at the top of the screen, that 
all the way around till we get to the hairpin at the bottom of Pacific Coast. That is literally wide open. There's where they get to all this build up of speed up to around 190 miles an hour. Well, you saw Paul Tracy. Paul Tracy qualifying sixth fastest here today. Tracy coming off an injury to drive quite well. There's the hairpin at the end of Pacific Boulevard. This is where you'll see passing under braking, and this is where last year in the Indy Lights race, the leader, Greg Moore, was taken out when he was rear-ended. This is, this is unfortunately where we'll probably see the most of the accidents when we don't look forward to seeing, but that's the turn. That's because it's the easiest place to pass, you said, and it's also where everybody tries to get to one place at one time. Well, we're going to run down the grid, but before we do, let's stay with these cars for one complete lap. There's Al Jr., Ribeiro. Here's the, shit, here's the first chicane that we go through. Now this, right there, you'll see the cars jumping that. You'll see both of the right side tires, one's in your left, getting off the ground. The cars will literally, literally jump there. This, of course, is going underneath the tunnel under the big buildings over here. Now remember, the drivers go from light to dark back to light. Very hard on their eyes. Look at this light and then the darkness. Very difficult getting through there to see and to race side by side. Well, you saw Greg Moore come through. This just about takes us through the first lap as they'll come down now. There's BC Play Stadium and downtown Vancouver. They'll make one more right-hand turn then through the start-finish area. And as they get set to complete the first of three warm-up laps here in beautiful Vancouver, let's run down the starting grid for today's race. And the pole sitter for the third race in a row, fifth time this year, Alex Zanardi for Chip Ganassi, the hottest driver on the IndyCar circuit. Sharing the front row is Michael Andretti. Michael's a two-time winner here in Vancouver, four victories so far this season. In row two, Bobby Rahal, three-time Indy champion, Indy car champion, but Rahal has not won a race since 1992. And his teammate with Rahal Racing, Brian Herta, has had five top six finishes in a row. Then in row three, here's your points leader, Jimmy Vassar. Four wins early this year. He is still 21 points up on Al Unser Jr. Paul Tracy is the sixth fastest qualifier. He's not 100%, but looking to improve on last year's eighth place finish in Vancouver. He's followed by teammate Al Unser Jr. Striving for five wins in seven races here in Vancouver. Andre Ribeiro, all kinds of incidents in Road America. His three wins have all been on ovals. Next, Mauricio Guzman heading row five, second place, his best finish in IndyCar racing. And still with Brazilians, Gil de Ferran in the yellow Pennzoil for Jim Hall. He is last year's Rookie of the Year. As we move to row six, the Toronto winner, Adrian Fernandez from Mexico City. Three top six placings of late. He has been very, very hot. Scott Pruitt back to the American driver. Scott Pruitt for Pat Patrick Racing and Team Firestone. Now let's double up in row seven. Greg Moore has had seven finishes with points, seven without, plus Christian Fittipaldi for Newman Haas. On to row number eight for the unhappy Robbie Gordon going to NASCAR next year, and Raul Boisel, seventh is his best this year. From Pac West Racing, Mark Blundell faster on Friday, and Parker Johnstone okay after being rolled over at Road America. Row 10 is Jan Magnuson subbing for Emerson Fittipaldi from F1, his first start here, along with Juan Manuel Fangio. Row 11, Stefan Johansson, who was third here in 92 and 93, plus the Indy 500 runner-up Davy Jones for Rick Gallus. Scott Goodyear on row 12 for the 23rd fastest qualifier. He's had a tough year, plus rookie Michel Jourdain from Mexico. P.J. Jones, son of the great Carnelli in row 13, plus Brazil's Roberto Moreno, a veteran of Formula One, first Vancouver start. And the 27th racer is Hiro Mashusta, who's finished his highest 12th here. That was in 1993, but he was well off the pace yesterday. Well, one more lap. You see the official signal here. They've completed two warm-up laps in Vancouver. They should be racing after the third. If they're not racing, if they're not perfectly formed, there's the pole sitter, Zanardi, followed by Michael Andretti, Bobby Rahal, Herta, Vassar, Paul Tracy, and his teammate, Al Unser Jr. There's Andre Ribeiro. But the point is, Bobby Unser, if they're not lined up perfectly, the pole sitter, Zanardi, must cross the finish line first. They will go around under yellow one more time. Well, they're actually supposed to be even right there. There, Brian, but the problem is, as we come off of this last turn down here, there's not a lot of distance between there and the start finish line. 
So the back part of the field won't be lined up perfectly. And they don't care about that. As long as the front guys are somewhat close, they'll let it go, I Yeah, think. somewhat close, even. Technically, he's supposed to be a little bit ahead because if they try to get him even, we remember what happened in Toronto yes. one year where the second-place car came down about five or ten feet ahead of the pole sitter. There's the pole sitter, the target, the red car. That is Zanardi. The black car is Michael Andretti. They must cross the start-finish line at least even side by side. We'll wait for the green flag. And we're underway. It's a clean start in Vancouver. And through the first turn, it's Sonardi, followed by Michael Andretti, Bobby Rahal, Brian Herta, and Paul Tracy. Down onto Lakeshore or Pacific Boulevard. Lakeshore Boulevard in Toronto, Pacific here in Vancouver. 190 miles an hour. Under braking. Here's this tight turn. And cleanly through go the top seven cars. You can see Zanardi really had to protect his position down there. So far, no problems on the racetrack, which makes us really happy and makes the race a whole lot better. Here's the first you can Here's the second big prop area of the track. Let's see if they all get through here good now. There's Greg Moore in the blue and white player's car going through yesterday in practice. Moore bounced that sort of curve very hard on several occasions. The car actually became airborne. Now that we got up in the air a foot, Brian. Now to complete the first of 100 laps here this afternoon. Back onto the start finish straightaway comes the pole sitter, Alessandro Zanardi. Here's a great shot on board with Michael Andretti. The easy left hand, high speed turn, and now up to nearly 200 miles an hour on Pacific Boulevard. Now that, that, that turn, which is almost 90 degrees on the left, is wide open. You can watch Mario's hand. How hard they work. Look how much easier they work down here in the hairpin. Remember, when we watch them in the fast turns, how hard they work. That's on board with Michael there. Following Zanardi, this is in the first chicane. I watched. Ah, he didn't hit the hump real hard on that, but he's missing it. Remember, they're all full of fuel. The cars are all touching bottom right now because they need to get him as low to the ground as they can to make him handle good. Here's the second chicane. Now, Jack Arute is working the pits today with Ken Daniels, and I'm wondering about the pit strategy. Arute's a master on that. What do you think here this afternoon in this 100-lap race? Well, according to Jack Arute, they're going to stop in around 30 laps the first time. They're going to be a two-stop race. Now, it may end up being three stops with some cars, depending on the yellow flags, if we have it. Cars beginning to string out as they come through the start finish straightaway and down onto Pacific Boulevard. Of course, we remember here several years ago when Danny Sullivan actually ran out of gas late in the race driving for Penske. Through the hairpin at the end of Pacific Boulevard go the leaders. There's Paul Tracy followed by Al Unser Jr. Behind them is Gilda Ferrin, Ribeiro, Fernandez, Pruitt, Guzelman, and still all 27 cars running. The leader is Alex Sonardi followed by Michael Andrew ready Bobby Ray Hall and Brian Herta. That is literally amazing when you say all 27 are still running right now because you know usually you, you watch a passing usually they're really trying to gain positions at the start at the easiest time. Very difficult, very hard to pass now but at the start everybody goes down into the turn at the end of Pacific and they're really trying to crowd in there but no problem. Bobby, take us down the straightaway. Talk about the shifting. That's bias right there into that real fast turn. You can watch again with Michael here. We're on board with him. Now it's a long straightaway. This is really, really, really fast. 190 miles an hour. Here's the shift point. See that number one up on your left? He comes down. He makes a total 180 degree corner. That's Zanardi right in front of him. And watch his hand to the right there. He reaches over. There's a down shift. The, the shifts are all just right in line. They don't move over like a doing a truck. They just pop, pop, pop like a motorcycle. That's all they do. And when they shift up, Brian, they don't even have to let off of the uh, throttle. They just hold it down and shift it. Very quickly, Jack Aru. Brian, one of the things that we have found out, what will dictate when the, the leaders come into the pits will be tire wear and track position. The fuel situation, as we said, 30-30, maybe making it a two-stop race. But the big concern right now is the battle. Zanardi on the Firestones, right behind him, Michael Andretti on the Goodyears. Now, Goodyear brought a brand new tire here, seems to be performing very well. But Firestone, as is the case with Goodyear, say, once they've got five laps in the record books, the tires level out. Then it will be a question how long they can stay level before they begin to go away. Ken? Well, Jack, and uh, all the drivers who are on Goodyear tires, they're all on the primary tire except for Tracy and Davy Jones. Tracy is on the softer tire. Brian? 
All right, Ken, you saw with that great onboard camera shot, Bobby Unser, that Michael Andretti is beginning to reel in the leader, Alessandro Zanardi. In fact, I thought he might make a move under braking at the end of Pacific Boulevard. No question, Andretti is closing the gap. Well, what he's doing to Zanardi right when he does that, he's trying to worry him, trying to get, get him to drive in a little bit too deep into some corner, make a mistake, and Michael can take advantage of the mistake. Now, this goes right by us our finish line again down the fast straightaway this is where michael would try to do it but he's too far back this time to make an attempt down there so zanardi and zanardi has honda power that's as opposed you saw the graphic to the ford power for michael andretti and honda has been the dominant engine in indycar racing this year i think one of the things that jack Aroot brought up that we have to really watch all along is zanardi ahead firestone michael goodyear Watch and see how their tires do. Is Michael able to move up on him when their tires are cold or when they're hot? And then we can kind of watch the entire race and see how it's going to come out that way. Link the tire, heating and cooling up with the fuel consumption really will make the race exciting. The top three, Zanardi, Andretti, and Bobby Rahal, followed by Rahal's teammate. There's car 18, Bobby Rahal, his teammate Brian Hurt is fourth. Jimmy Vassar is running fifth. Al Unser Jr. sixth. Paul Tracy is now seventh. An update on the other Canadians. Greg Moore is dropped down to 15th. And Scott Goodyear is running at 24th for Derek Walker. There's Brian Herta just going by. Herta, the shell car, is running fourth, followed by the red vehicle of Jimmy Vassar, Al Unser Jr., and Paul Tracy. There they go. That's Herta, Vassar, Al Unser Jr., and just coming into the picture, Paul Tracy. Okay, now keep in mind also, there's little Al, the number two right ahead, him, Vassar again. The red car right there, Jimmy Vassar, the points leader in the championship. Little Al, the second points leader. Now, these guys have their own race that they're trying to run because it's points that they're after. Not so much to win, points. That's the whole thing. The championship's worth more than everything. Well, you talk about points and points races, that's M Mashusta, Hero Mashusta giving way. I'm not sure whether he's just slow or having driving problems, but the top three cars, namely Alice Sinardi, Michael Andretti, and Bobby Rahal of all lap, Hero Mashusta, who is running 27th. On board with Bobby Rahal as he trails Andretti and Zanardi. Now, if you see Rahal, who we're on board with right here, he is backed off from Michael. He was right up behind him. What he did is he goes up there, he worries Michael a little bit, and then backs off. That's in order to save his car and save his tires a little bit. He knows, the, or he feels, that right now is not the time to make an issue. You're watching live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver. We'll return right after this. live in Vancouver. The race leader is Alex Zanardi, followed by Michael Andretti, Bobby Rahal, Brian Herta. Jimmy Vassar is the points leader by 21 over Al Unser Jr. Two races to go. Al Jr. can still pick up 41 points. Jack Arud, an update on Jimmy Vassar. Well, what Jimmy Vassar is doing right now is trying to conserve a little bit of fuel. He's trying to emulate his leader, Alex Zanardi. Both of the teams have been told that there's six different fuel mapping software fuel mapping uh, deals on the engines now what both team both Sonardi and Vassar have gone to is what we call minus two that's to conserve a little bit of fuel in the case of Vassar they're saying just maintain a rhythm look for not position but comfortable thank you Jack there's Greg Moore Greg Moore is running 15th and trailing Robbie Gordon Bobby you want to talk about fuel yes well I just wanted to say what Jack brought up is very interesting they have a knob in there that has numbers on it. They tell the driver via radio to put it on a certain number. So what it told Jack was, just so everybody knows, is, is that that's their game plan. Total difference from Zanardi, he should lead this race, try to win it that way, whereas Vassar needs to worry about points. Two different team plans. You talk about Vassar, there's Brian Herter running fourth, and the red car is Jimmy Vassar, the points leader, followed by Al Unser Jr. And again, Jimmy Vassar with a 21-point lead in the fight for the overall championship. Spencer Jr. can pick up 20 for a win here today, one for the most laps led. Number three is Paul Tracy, and he can pick up a maximum of 22 points next weekend at Monterey, California. Paul Tracy is the top Canadian running seventh, and he is pursued by the yellow car. That's Brazilian Gilles de Ferrin driving for Jim Hall. Jim Hall originally, as Bobby Unser will tell you, not from Texas, folks, but from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, another thing you want to remember about Little Al when we talk about game plans. 
Vassar might be conserving fuel and taking care of everything. Little Al cannot do this. Little Al must try to pass and win the race because he's behind in points, whereas Vassar has to protect. As we look at Paul Tracy, and Tracy will come across the start-finish line in seventh place. I want to talk about Tracy's season, but once again, quickly, Jack or Jack? Well, you may wonder how a team can tell which way they should go with the fuel. Behind the scoring stand here are computers that are hooked up to the telemetry on board each race car. Now, that will measure about 80 different functions on board the car. The one, Bobby Unser, as you know, most important, fuel consumption in real-time analysis. So lap after lap, it can tell you how close are you getting to that 1.7 or 1.8 miles per gallon of methanol. They can radio back from the top side back to their driver, go up or go down on the fuel mixture and the fuel mapping. You know, one nice thing about that also, Jack, is, is that the driver, the strategies are happening in the pit, but the driver still has to drive the car. He's merely told what to do, and he does it. As far as going fast and hard, it's flat out and go for it. Well, a great shot from the rear cameras here as the picture now takes you down onto Pacific Boulevard. And again, the speeds here, upwards of 200 miles an hour. Al Unser, Jr. is car two driving for Roger Penske pursuing Jimmy Vassar, and that's looking back from Vassar to Al Unser Jr. What a great shot, Bobby. Oh, they're beautiful. I mean, the camera work these days is just awesome. Brings the race right to you. Well, Al, every time you slow down, of course, the bad guy pulls up. That's because the speeds are slower. But when they get the straightaway, they all equal out. Time-wise, they stay virtually the same all the time. Well, we'll go back to that shot in just a minute. The problem with those shots is that they're set up by microwave to the helicopters, and of course, when you go under an overpass, that is the breakup you see in the screen. Here's Al Unser Jr. as he tries to close up now on Jimmy Vassar. Car two is Unser running in sixth place. And look at this. What a great shot down through the start finish area. Looking back from Jimmy Vassar to Al Unser Jr. Keep in mind, Roger Penske runs little Al. That's the car we see right there in the middle of our screen. Roger Penske runs that team. If he sees Vassar, for example, slowing down a little bit too much, getting a little bit too conservative. He'll tell little Al, turn the boost up, turn a little bit more RPM, whatever you have to do to make an issue, make a point of getting by Jimmy Vassar because the other guys maybe are getting away. Jimmy Vassar with Honda Power, and now we look at Paul Tracy pursued by Gilles DeFerrin. There goes Ribeiro, who's running ninth, and Adrian Fernandez. This is a good fight as we look at Paul Tracy, car three, and Gilles DeFerrin driving for Jim Hall, who retires this year. Word is that Gilles DeFerrin will replace Robbie Gordon with Derek Walker last year, but talk to us, talk to the Canadian fans about Paul Tracy. He's been reckless, he's wrecked a lot of cars, and in many ways is lucky to be driving for Roger Penske. Well, there's not very many teams that could afford Tracy. Uh, you know, I figured out here not too long back that Paul oh, Tracy's already, whoa, that hero my shoes is really getting everybody's way, but at any rate, he's wrecked more cars in just the few years that he's been racing than I did in my entire racing career. Not, not bad for me, it just means that he's very expensive for a car owner, and there's only a guy like Roger Penske that could afford him. That's Jill DeFerrin who's off the course and coming back on and running one of the runoff areas. DeFerrin was running eighth behind Paul Tracy. You're watching live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver. Al Unser Jr. is sixth, Tracy is now seventh, and DeFerrin has dropped down to ninth. With Bobby Unser, Jack Arood, and Ken Daniels, I'm Brian Williams. Welcome back to Vancouver. This is the race leader, his car right here, Alex Zanardi, driving for Chip Ganassi. And there's the gap between Zanardi and Michael Andretti, who is running second, running third. There he is, Bobby Rahal. Let's wait for the fourth place car, his teammate Brian Herta. Herta considerably back, so it's fairly close, Bobby Unser, between Michael Andretti and Bobby Rahal as they fight for second place. Yes, but they've all kind of settled down right now. They're, nobody's really pressing the other guy right in this particular group. Zanardi, there he is. Now watch Michael. Well, he didn't see. Michael's back a little ways, and behind him is Ray Hall a little bit. And what they're doing, they've settled down. They've decided they can't pass each other without too much risk or burning their tires up to the cooling it. Now Zanardi coming up on some of the back markers. That car he's immediately behind is Dan Gurney's car. Dan Gurney's car driven by P.J. Jones. Right now, let's go down to Jack Aru. Let's update you on that chase for the championship. You know Jimmy Vassar is leading over Al Unser Jr. Well, Vassar has a problem with his race car. Not one that can't be 
fixed though. He's reported that the car is a little bit loose. So on the pit stop, what they've decided to do is give him a little bit more wing. How they will do this is they will turn this screw here. It will change the angle of the attack of the second element of the wing. It'll create more downforce. But on the long straightaways, it will also create more drag. And that could cost you a little bit of speed, Bobby Unser, at the end of the long shoot. It certainly would, Jack, but as busy as this track is, as many turns as we have, and it's turns all the time here practically, it'll help him, and that's what he'll do. Car 12 is Jimmy Vassar, the points leader, who is currently standing in fifth place behind his teammate, the race leader Zanardi, Michael Andretti, Bobby Rahal, and Rahal's young teammate, Brian Herda. Now the lead right now as we continue to look at Vassar, and he's being pursued very closely by Al Unser Jr., and they stand one, two in the driver's standings. There's the race leader, Alex Zanardi, as he tries to go by one of the back markers. His lead is 5.12 seconds over Michael Andretti. Ready. Now this is the problem that you have. Remember, it's hard to pass here. Through right in here, you can't pass if a car is doing very good. Now, Michael knows that he's lapping cars. Michael should have tried to get up. That's the easiest time to get a guy like Lenardi is when he runs up behind guys like, like the uh, right there. Jones. Right there. Now look at there. Now let's see what he does here. No, Jones doesn't let him by. Oh, uh, that's. Now, that's what happens. You can't pass. Now, that's what Zanardi, there's a lack of experience that he has on passing cars here. The race leader, Alex Zanardi, is out of this race as he tried to go by one of the back markers. That would be car 98, P.J. Jones, driving for Dan Gurney. He is absolutely livid. Look at this. Zanardi with a chance to wrap up the rookie title, qualifying so very, very well. Let's have one look at it. That's P.J. Jones on the left. Zanardi's on the outside of him. That place almost got upside down. That would have really, should have, could have been a very nasty wreck. P.J. Jones was merely holding his line. Zanardi should have known better, but if you remember, that's what we said early on. The experience, as opposed to the rookies that really don't know how to get around this racetrack in traffic. Plenty fast, just lacking in experience. What you're telling me, Bobby Unser, is it was Zanardi's fault and yes, not P.J. Jones? It was his fault in the fact that he knew that you cannot get two cars through there side by side. I know that he wanted P.J. to give him room, though. All right, Jack Root is standing by. Jack? Well, yes, you guys are absolutely right. He wanted P.J. to give room a lap before. Chip Ganassi, who calls the shots for Alex Zanardi, went to the cart officials and was complaining about P.J. Jones said he's got to give us some room we're the leader he looked up on the giant screen and saw the crash and went absolutely ballistic here we're going to see if we can try and get a word in with Chip because you can see Zanardi goes by as he walks by us he's extremely upset still upset this is something that you don't like to see but in close quarters racing the back marker should give way gentlemen well, the back marker did not give way, but Jackaroot, it's very interesting as we look at the replay, the pits have been closed as we look at the replay. On that particular incident, it was Zanardi's fault, but on the previous incident, the one we were actually looking at in slow-mo when the accident occurred, Bobby Unser, that was definitely P.J. Jones's fault, and that's where Chip Ganassi was really complaining. He did not give way to the faster car, the race leader. But re remember, they are they are supposed to give way a little bit, but they do not have to get out of the way. It's more of a gentleman's agreement. P.J. made a mistake. He should have eased up. He knew that he was being lapped by Zanardi, but Zanardi surely had more sense than go through a chicane with two cars. There are the two race leaders now with Zanardi out. That's Michael Andretti running first, Bobby Rahal running second, Ryan Herta is running third, and let's have one more look at it, Bobby. Here they go into the game. Well, they really come out of it there. PJ at that time really should have not been close to it. It was the one before that is where all the problems really started happening. I tell PJ you, kept pushing an issue. He should not have done that. You made a very good point. We remember the tragedy with Jeff Krasnoff in Toronto. Zanardi came very close to becoming airborne and spinning there. Very, very lucky there was not serious injury. You know, a, a fast driver on a track as hard as the track here in Vancouver, and it's busy all the time. Everybody can see you're in turn just constantly. You can't can't just know that the slower guys are always just going to get out of your way because they don't do it. They can't see their mirrors and go forward all the time. It's difficult. Whereas P.J. 
Jump doesn't really have an awful lot of experience. He doesn't know what to do either, so I think both of them are probably at fault during some of that. Well, we're under a full course yellow as we look at young P.J. Jones, the son of the great Parnelli Jones. There's the race leader, Michael Andretti, coming into the pit. So the cars are pitting under full course yellow. A new race leader now as Bobby Rahal decides to stay out. And most of the cars coming into the pits under a full course yellow here in Vancouver. As P.J. Jones took out the race leader, Alex Sinardi. You're watching live coverage, and now into the pits is Ray Hall. You're watching live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver. Back live in Vancouver, you saw the race leader at the time, Alex Sinardi's car. He is now out of the race, and the new leader is Michael Andretti, followed by Bobby Rahal, Ryan Herta, Scott Pruitt. Mauricio Guzman is currently running fifth. The top Canadian is Paul Tracy, and Tracy has dropped right out of the top ten. Jack Aroot, bring us up to date and uh, talk to us about the first incident as we see P.J. Jones. That's the one I think that really annoyed Chip, Chip Ganassi. Absolutely. I talked to Chippy. In fact, right now, Chip Ganassi and Alex Zanardi are sequestered in their trailer here. We're waiting for them. But here's how the, the events unfolded. One entire lap prior, Chip Ganassi talked to Alex on the radio, and they went to card officials and said, look, how about throwing the passing flag? Be a little more aggressive with it. We're having trouble with P.J. Jones. He's last on the grid. We're first. Nothing seemed to unfold. They were watching the big screen TV as they were still arguing their case, that being Team Ganassi, when lo and behold, the crash occurred. It really wasn't a case of whose fault it was. What both Ganassi and, and Zanardi were extremely upset about was the fact that the passing flag was not used aggressively. And Bobby Unser, you know a passing flag is an advisory flag, but it means that there is a faster car overtaking you. Unfortunately, there is no rule that says that someone receiving the passing flag has to give way. No, Jack, you're absolutely right. The problem was, is, is on uh, PJ's part, is, is once they almost got together getting into the first chicane, he should have eased up and let it go by because to make an issue out of that was totally wrong for PJ. Jack, you want more? Yeah, let's get Chip Ganassi's side of the story. I've kind of retold the story about the lap traffic, the use of the passing flag, but Chip, I, I have never seen that happen before with a back marker that was running last. I mean, you know, I, 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 I pleaded with the officials for the move over flag. You saw he was behind him. I mean, and was making moves on him for two laps, and then the guy breaks in the middle of the straightaway. I mean, I never saw anything like that. I thought the back markers were supposed to give way to the leaders. Back to green flag action, gentlemen. Back racing in Vancouver, it's Michael Andretti, followed by Bobby Rahal, Jimmy Vassar, Al Unser Jr., Brian Herta, Andre Ribeiro, Christian Fittipaldi, Scott Pruitt, Adrian Fernandez, and Greg Moore has now moved into 10th place. So Greg Moore, the top Canadian, Al Unser Jr., followed by Jimmy Vassar, Brian Herta, and Ribeiro through that hairpin turn. On board now with Christian Fittipaldi. And it's also important to say right now that little Al did get by Jimmy Vassar over the pit stop. Now, everybody's going to be wondering, how is he hit right now? It was through the pit. <laughs> Excuse me, Pinsky is famous for fast pit stops. Well, Paul Tracy has dropped down to 15. He was running sixth. I'm wondering, maybe Jack Arud or Ken Daniels can find out, did Paul Tracy experience any problems with the car because he has dropped out of the top 10 where he was running in sixth place, and Paul Tracy is now running 15th. The top Canadian, Maple Ridge's Greg Moore, is running 10th, and the race leader, Michael Andretti, followed closely by Ray Hall. Jimmy Vassar trails Al Unser Jr. who's now moved up to third. There's Ray Hall and right there is Al Unser Jr. who's third. On board with the race leader Michael Andretti. Bobby, you tell me this shot is the best to show what it's like sitting in a race car. This is really the closest thing. That's the closest thing to a real shot of driver's seat. That's exactly what it looks like. The only difference is in the camera we're a little bit higher. But believe me, that is what the driver sees. Well, you said at the beginning of the telecast is Michael Andretti's lead is one second over Bobby Rahal. Watch out for Al Unser Jr. as he tries to win for the first time this year and possibly take over the points lead. He is trying to make it four in a row here in Vancouver. Let's go down to Ken Daniels. 
Rangers. Well, Brian, you talk about those gaining ground on yellows and moving up with the pack for Gilles DeFerrin. and he wanted to come in, but the pits were closed, and Gilles DeFerrin had to go back out when he came around again, and he's been having lots of trouble with the power today. He now sits in 20th spot, so he's been hurting. Jack? Let's update you. Let's update you on a situation with Al Unser Jr. In the practice session this morning, Al Unser Jr.'s team made some major changes to the chassis configuration on the race car. According to Al, before it started, this specific car, the Penske, is very, very susceptible to minor changes. He said it made all the difference in the world and feels as if he's got a good chance to run to the front. We're checking on the situation with Tracy. We'll get back to you. All right, Jack, as you check, let me tell you, Tracy has now moved up three places to 12th, so it, looked like there, it looks like there's nothing wrong with the Paul Tracy car as he's making a move. On board with Bobby Rahal, who's running second and chasing the race leader, the Kmart car driven by Michael Andretti. Now keep keep in mind also, Ray Hall's been here a lot of times, has a lot of experience. A lot of people have said Bobby Ray Hall is not going to win another race. He's out to prove them wrong. I've seen him working harder and trying harder here at Vancouver than I've seen him for a long time. Jack Root. That pit stop by Paul Tracy cost him valuable positions, gentlemen. It's not performance on the racetrack. According to his crew chief, they were a little slow getting down off the jack. He began to accelerate. Next thing he saw, he had to check up because of a car pulling out in front of him. And they said that cost them as many as five spots back out under green. It really did cost him. Great work, Jack. Thank you. Tracy was 15th. He's now worked back up to 12th. The top Canadian is Greg Moore, who's now moved into ninth place. You're watching live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver on CBC. And we've got a good one here on the West Coast this afternoon. Back live in Vancouver. Outstanding race here this afternoon as Michael Andretti has a lead of less than one second over Bobby Rahal. Alan Sir Jr. right behind, followed by Jimmy Vassar, Brian Herta, and Christian Fittipaldi. The top two Canadians, Greg Moore is running ninth, and Paul Tracy is running 12th. Tracy will just have to keep building up. It, is, it also shows you when you watch Paul Tracy go back so far during a pit stop, pit stops are really important. It also reassures you that the teams are what wins races, not just the drivers. Christian Fittipaldi, who's running sixth, pursuing Brian Herta, and there's Greg Moore running ninth, followed by Robbie Gordon, Jan Magnussen over from Formula One, replacing the injured Emerson Fittipaldi. Brian Herta there in the shell car is running fifth, Christian Fittipaldi sixth, Pruitt is seventh, Fernandez eighth, Greg Moore is ninth, and Robbie Gordon is tenth. Well, I was going to tell you right there with, there we have, there we have Scott Christian Pruitt. Fittipaldi and Scott Pruitt right behind him. Well, I thought there was going to be a pass there. I had to hold my breath just for a minute. <laughs> but Pruitt is really pushing on him. Now, Scott Pruitt is normally awesome fast. He's the factory Firestone driver has not been doing too good at this race he hasn't been as, or had as good a setup here as he normally has there's Vassar followed by Pruitt or Fittipaldi I should say followed by Pruitt Adrian Fernandez and Greg Moore Jackaroo Great story about Scott Pruitt. When I got here this morning, I went to the crew, and the crew members shall remain nameless. I said, why are you so slow this week? And they said, we're not sure. He said, but then we found out this morning, and we thought maybe it was the driver. And then, lo and behold, in practice, we went much quicker. And I said, well, what did you change? He said, the driver showed up. Well, that always helps a little bit, Jack. <laughs> Watch Scott Pruitt and Christian Fittipaldi. They're going at it tooth and toenail here. There's Christian Fittipaldi. In the red There's car. Pruitt in the Firestone car. Christian Fittipaldi driving for Kmart is a teammate of Michael Andretti driving for the legendary Carl Haas and Paul Newman. Across the start-finish line and a look at this tremendous crowd here in Vancouver. There's the race leader, Michael Andretti. Bobby Rahal is all over Andretti and there's Al Unser Jr. The top three cars all within one and a half seconds of each other. Now here's what little Al will be doing right now. Game plan to get. He will try to push Rahal to the point where Rahal will get up and push Michael Harder. Hopefully they'll cause some sort of a confrontation, accident, spin out, a mistake, something like that, little Al will benefit. That's exactly what he's trying to do now. Well, we talked about the young Lions, Paul Tracy, Alex Zanardi is out of the race, Andre Ribeiro, Greg Moore, Gilles DeFerrin, they've been warned, they've been fine, but as we said, we're on board now with the race leader through the start finish area, Michael Andretti. As you said at the top of the show, Bobby, watch out for the veterans, namely, Michael Andretti is running first, 
Bobby Rahal is running second, and Al Unser Jr., who's running third. Let's go down to Ken Daniels. Well, Brian, I'm here in the uh, player's pit of Greg Moore during the pit stop under yellow. One of the uh, TV camera's wires got caught underneath the tire. That was a bit of a problem. By the way, it wasn't ours. Uh, Greg Moore, his team telling him to stick with our game plan. That game plan is stay competitive, try to stay in the top ten, see what we can do the last 20 laps or so. They want to finish here and finish, obviously, as high as they can, Brian. All right, Ken, you mentioned Moore wants to stay in the top ten. Greg Moore is currently running ninth, and Michael Andretti is having trouble getting by Bobby Unser's favorite race driver, Hero Mishusta, and there they go by Well, Mishusta. Hero moved completely out of the way and let Michael go. There he let Ray Hall go. That's what P.J. Jones, it's nearly out of the same place. Did not do. P.J. Jones should have let Zanardi go, but remember, Zanardi controlled the deal. He shouldn't have made an issue out of it. Now, Mishusta holding up Al Unser Jr. Now, Unser Jr. tries to get by Mishusta and does go by Mashusta on Pacific Boulevard. Down through the hairpin, the race leader, Michael Andretti, followed by Bobby Rahal and Al Unser Jr. just coming into view. You're watching live coverage, the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver on CBC. live in Vancouver. The race leader is still Michael Andretti, followed by Bobby Rahal, Al Jr., Jimmy Vassar, Brian Herta, and Christian Fittipaldi. Jack Aroot, anything on Michael Andretti? Well, Michael Andretti should go just a little bit quicker now that they had that pit stop. Early on in the, in the race, he reported to the crew that the car seemed all right, but he didn't like the amount of grip that he had. It looked as if maybe these Goodyear tires, once they settle out, don't give as much grip as he would like. He put a new set of tires on Bobby Unser, and so far, he likes the way the car is running. All right, Jack, you just saw the red car. That was Jan Magnuson almost taking Paul Tracy out of the race. There's Greg Moore followed by Paul Tracy. So Tracy's moved up to 10th. There's Moore. Fernandez is 9th. There's Moore who's 10th. Look at the smoke Make that coming ninth. out of Moore's got smoke coming out of the car. Moore is 9th. Tracy is now running 10th. And you saw Tracy get around Jan Magnuson who made the uh, a serious mistake there at the end of the a little bit too deep, that's all. It just, uh, thank God this is such a nice racetrack. There's a lot of escape routes. Now, there it is here on Masusta then, holding up everybody in the back. It's very difficult to pass lap card. Masusta's on the left, the Panasonic car. That's Rivero. Rivero attempting to go by Parker Johnstone. Oh. And I'm not sure if oh. they touched. Very, very close. Johnstone is running 18th and Ribeiro 19th. Johnstone's had a lot of these problems lately. Now down through the start finish area comes Adrian Fernandez followed by Greg Moore. Fernandez, the Tocati car, the winner in Toronto is 8th. Moore is 9th and Paul Tracy just coming into your screen is 10th. 8th, 9th and 10th place cars at the end of Pacific Boulevard and again Bobby Unser, I see smoke coming out of Greg Moore's car. Yes and we hear that there's a black flag out. It's, it's easy to assume this for Greg Moore's car. If it's smoking like that they're assuming that he's losing oil getting on the track. So we, we understand. Bring him in. Yep, we understand from our executive producer Lawrence Kimber that Car 99, Greg Moore, currently running in the top 10 from Maple Ridge, British Columbia, will be coming into the pits. And it's interesting, during the driver's parade, about 25 minutes before the start your engines command, the crowd was chanting, now he's been told to stay out. The pits have told him to stay out. The crowd was chanting, we want Greg. And Moore stays in this race, currently running ninth. But well, what has happened now? You're wondering, why do they say they're going to bring him in and then they say they're going to leave him out? It's because they negotiate between the mechanics and the card officials and what they've done is they've convinced the card officials that it's smoke not oil that's leaking they've got a reason for it and they've convinced them that's what it is and incidentally i believe the mechanics because i don't think he's losing oil i think it's just smoke coming out but it is serious well a good battle between michael andretti and bobby rahal the two cars there running first and second and another great battle between the two Canadians, the top two Canadians, Paul Tracy, who's now running in 10th place, and Greg Moore, who's ninth. That is Jimmy Vassar, who's running fourth, followed by Brian Herta, running fifth. Down through the start finish area comes Al Unser Jr., the third place car. Now there you see Vassar running behind little Al. There's Greg Moore. Smoke is no worse. It only smokes sometimes. You see the Vassar's falling little Al. Here he's coming into the pits. Now that's 
That's not the black flag bringing him in. He's coming in by pit instructions from his mechanics. So Greg Moore is into the pits, and that means he'll drop out of the top ten, and Paul Tracy is now the top Canadian running ninth. Ken Daniels. Well, he's cut off the engine. And it looks to me, uh, Greg Moore's day could be done here, Brian. We'll have to see. He's still in the car, but the engine has been cut off. So Greg Moore just has to uh, wait this out as they work frantically here, Brian. But uh, let's hope his day isn't done, but it could very well be. Well, a bitter disappointment for Maple Ridge is Greg Moore. Moore had three goals this year, Bobby Unser, to be in the top ten, which he is, to win the Rookie Award. He trails an Artie and to win a race, and he'd hoped to do it. He has yet to win. He had hoped to do it here before the hometown fans this afternoon. But just keep in mind that once you've shut your engine off, once you come in, they start taking off body panels, the guy is done. He may get back out on the racetrack, but he won't win this race, and that's going to disappoint a lot of the local people, I know. On board with Jimmy Vassar with Honda Power driving the target car for Chip Ganassi, Ganassi rather, and Jimmy Vassar is running fourth, trailing Al Unser Jr., Bobby Rahal, and Michael Andretti. You're watching live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver. There you see the top six. Moore is out of the race, and Paul Tracy is running ninth. Back live in Vancouver, that is Jan Magnuson who is out of this race in the number nine car. Magnuson driving for the injured Emerson Fittipaldi. Let's have one look at it. There is Paul Tracy, and he's followed by Robbie Gordon. Robbie Gordon's got everything locked up going down there. He's in there too deep. Magnuson was cutting across. That's Robbie Gordon's fault. He'd gotten in there just too deep. You can see Robbie was locked up way back there. He knew he was going to hit him. Couldn't stop it. That's a little driver error right there on Gordon's part. little driver error by a man that many drivers think has done far too much whining. We're on board with the driver, Robbie Gordon, who's a complainer and whiner on many occasions and is leaving for NASCAR and has absolutely lambasted the foreign drivers on the Indy circuit, much to the annoyance of the other Indy drivers. So Robbie Gordon heading to NASCAR takes out Jan Magnussen here in this race in Vancouver. There's the race leader, Michael Andretti, followed by, and it is close, look at this, Bobby Rahal and then Al Unser Jr. Greg Moore is out of the race and standing by with Ken Daniels. Well, certainly a bitter disappointment for Greg. We understand you're leaking transmission fluid. Is that the case? Yeah, I guess there's some mechanical on the car. I mean, it's just so disappointing. We were running, we, we were doing what we wanted to do. Our plan was just to stick it out for a while and see you pick some spots up in the pits and stuff. We did that. It's too bad for those players' sports side team. We're running strong, but uh, oh well. And Sonardi out too. This has been the story of your season, though, hasn't it? It's been the story of your season. It has been the story of our season. It's a lot of bad luck. I'm just uh, hoping that we get it all out of the way this season. Next year we come back and win a bunch of races. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Brian. Thank you, Ken. And a great battle between the top three cars. You just saw Ray Hall. There's Ray Hall. Al Unser Jr. running second and third behind Michael Andretti. And Al Unser Jr. has really closed the gap. There's the race leader, Andretti. Look how close it is. There's Bobby Ray Hall, who's done well here in the past. And Al Unser Jr. with four victories so far here in Vancouver. The little Al and Ray Hall are really keeping Michael honest, that's for well, sure. Remember, <laughs> right there, Ray Hall just went by. There's Michael, Ray Hall, and little Al. Ray Hall and little Al used to be on the same team when they were with Gallus together. So I started to say that little Al certainly knows what his driving habits are all like. And the engines are an interesting story. We have the race leader, Michael Andretti, with Ford Power. Bobby Rahal with Mercedes. And, of course, Al Unser Jr. also with Mercedes Power for Roger Penske. And also keep in mind, too, that the tires have been on the cars a long time since the last pit stop. They're hot. They're slippery right now. You don't see as much like, for example, little Al diving into the turns under Rahal trying to outbreak them because when the tires get hot, of course, that's the hardest time to brake hard. For those of you just joining us, there's Brian Herta, who's running fifth. Let me run down the top ten. The leader is Michael Andretti, followed by Ray Hall, Alan Sir Jr., Jimmy Vassar, Brian Herta's fifth. Christian Fittipaldi's now moved up to sixth, just going through the picture of the red car right now. He's followed by Scott Pruitt, the white car, Adrian Fernandez in the Takati vehicle. The winner in Toronto is eighth. Paul Tracy is running ninth, and Guzelman is running tenth, rounding out the top ten here in Vancouver. 
The track is just getting hot and slippery. It's a cool day outside. It's a good day for racing, one of the best I've ever seen. But look at all the slide marks out there. Those come because you're locking the tires up. There's Paul Tracy right on the heels of Adrian Fernandez. Tracy, two Canadians still in this race. Scott Goodyear and Paul Tracy. Goodyear running 18th for Derek Walker, but he will not be a factor here today. Moore is out of the race, and Tracy is making a move. Now remember also, as we said yesterday, that Tracy's coming back from injury. He's been injured once a little time, a little while back here, and he's not going to be in as good a physical shape as normal. And I think also that makes the guy be a little bit more conservative, which doesn't hurt Tracy sometimes. There's Brian Herta, 26 years of age, lives in Dublin, Ohio. He was second last year in Cleveland, second this year in Michigan. Herta is followed by Christian Fittipaldi, Scott Pruitt, Adrian Fernandez, and of course, Paul Tracy. Brian Herta down, passing one of the back markers. That's Jordan in the Herdez car. Michel Jordan from Mexico, who is more than a lap down. And Paul Tracy continues to run strong in ninth place. This is live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver on CBC. And it appears that Magnuson is slowing down. With Bobby Unser, Jack Arud, and Ken Daniels, I'm Brian Williams as the race leader, Michael Andretti, crosses the start-finish line, followed by Bobby Rahal, and there's Al Unser Jr., the top three, all within two seconds of one another. Just think, every straightaway, Michael's kind of look at his mirrors, and he sees the same car, that dark gray nose on it with Rahal, and he sees that red and white one right there, a little Al, he says, wow, these guys are not easing up at all. And right behind Al Unser Jr. is Jimmy Vassar running fourth. Vassar trying to finish high today and wrap up the driver's standing. And that's his only concern is that red and white car number two, Little Al, because if he can just keep Little Al right there, he can't gain enough points to hurt him, and that's his intention. Well, Jimmy Vassar with a 21-point lead in the driver's standings coming here to Vancouver. Just one more race remaining. That's Monterey, Laguna Seca next weekend, and you get 20 points for a victory. So, and with a point for a pole and a point for leading most laps, the most points available to Al Unser Jr. is 41, so he can still catch Jimmy Vassar. On board now with the race leader, Michael Andretti whose lead is now 1.1 seconds over Bobby Rahal. Now, Michael, you can just see what that lap traffic looks like from our onboard camera as he went down into that sharp hairpin turn. It really gets scary down there because, Michael... That That's Raul Boisel. Raul Boisel is out of the race. And I started to say that that's what the driver sees. It's very difficult. He's got to just pass it early. Well, Hello, well there's Rahal. Oh my! Well, that's a hard place. That's T.J. Jones. That's, that's Toyota, Toyota Jones, and now he's letting the cars pass. Remember, Jones right here caused a serious problem earlier, knocking the race leader Alessandro Sonardi out of this race. There's Sonardi's teammate Jimmy Vassar now going by P.J. Jones. Let's once again join. Jackaroo. Well, you're talking about Jan Magnussen. He was going back out onto the racetrack. He came into the pits. They had to bump start him, Bobby, after that altercation with Robbie Gordon. Now, during the bump start, what happened was, during the altercation, they actually cut the tire up when he connected with Robbie Gordon. Now, the Goodyear people don't want to show the tire because it's ripped the sidewall. We don't want to get too close to it because, as you know, Bobby, that'll show people what the tire construction looks like. The tire... The tire competition as Jack brings up <laughs> is severe right now. With Goodyear, it's such a large company, and Firestone, hey, winning is everything to these guys, and showing the tires is not part of it. Everybody that has these tires must sign contracts, agreements that they cannot show them or take the tires with them. Ken Daniels? Well, Bobby, Mauricio Guzman won't be a factor today. He's been in the pits now for just about uh, five minutes or so. An electrical problem. They're changing all the spark plugs. He's even signaled over that he wishes he could get out of the car. His day is done, but they're still trying to get him back out there. And speaking of being out there, the race leader, Michael Andretti, now leads Bobby Rahal by less than a second. You're on board with Jimmy Vassar. Vassar is running fourth. And he does not have the third place car of Al Unser Jr. in his sights yet. But he is beginning to gain ever so slowly on the top three. 
right now once again Jack Aru. let's update you on the run for that points chase we've told you how Jimmy Vassar is trying to conserve in fuel I checked with Richard Buck the crew chief for Allen Sir Jr he said we're going to try and stay right where we are we'd like to go race for the lead but we've watched Michael Andretti he's been on a tear the last couple of weeks rather than chance trashing the car we'll stay right where we are until the end of the race we need these points Bobby where we are right now is on board with Bobby Rahal looking back at Al Unser Jr. as they come down Pacific Boulevard. And I'll tell you what, Bobby, I thought Al Jr. was going to pass him on that tenth and final turn. He tries to make a move here and will not do it at the end of Pacific. I was sitting there pounding on you. You <laughs> should have known it. Boy, oh boy. Jack, we caught Jack talking at a bad time for us. Jack, we're sorry, but man, we were seeing a good race there for a while. So it's Michael Andretti, still the race leader, Bobby Rahal running second, Al Unser Jr., their car to his third, followed by Jimmy Vassar, who's fourth, Ryan Herta fifth, Christian Fittipaldi sixth, Scott Pruitt is seventh, Adrian Fernandez eighth, Paul Tracy is running ninth, and Jill DeFerrin rounds out the top ten. The other Canadian running is Scott Goodyear, and Goodyear is doing a pretty good job for Derek Walker. He has moved up to 15th place. Greg Moore, one of four cars out of this race. Out of the race are Roberto Moreno, Alessandro Zanardi, Greg Moore, and Raul Boisel. Michael Andretti, the race leader, has now opened up a four-second lead over Bobby Rahal. Bobby Unser is just writing a note to me saying, where's Andretti? The answer is, Andretti is now leading Rahal and Unser by nearly four full seconds. This is live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver as Adrian Fernandez passes Scott Pruitt to go into seventh place. Andre Ribeiro is stalled at the end of Pacific Boulevard, so this race is under a full course yellow. There's the race leader, Michael Andretti. That will give Bobby Rahal a chance to move up. There's Ribeiro, who was running 14th, stalled at the end of Lakeshore and into the pits. Fresh tires, Michael Andretti, the race leader. Also coming into the pits is Bobby Rahal running second. So you're on board now with Rahal as Rahal comes into his pits. Al Unser Jr. is also in the pits. Michael Andretti's the first out. Al Jr. is second. And I believe Al Unser Jr. will move ahead of Bobby Rahal. Yes, Al Unser Jr. moves ahead of Bobby Rahal on the pit stop. That's what being Penske perfect is all about. This is what Roger Penske has brought into IndyCar racing as the finest pit stop that have ever happened. Made everybody else really get with it. And let's go down to Ken Daniels under a full course. Fire, fire right there, Magnuson's car. Hang on, before going down to Ken, let's stay with that shot. Magnuson's car is on fire. This is not the car. a danger fire. It's not a dangerous thing. It's oil and stuff burning that plastic fiberglass, or not fiberglass, carbon fiber stuff in the back. But he does need to get it down and get fire extinguishers to it. Jan Magnuson over from Formula One. He is a Danish driver replacing the injured. Emerson Fittipaldi, no problem at all. Magnuson is out of the car in one of the runoff areas. And Not dangerous to him at all. Nope, they will extinguish the flames. It looks a lot worse than it is, folks. Simply a, a lot of smoke, not a serious incident. Serious in as much as it knocks him out of the race. There's Scott Goodyear for Derek Walker. Now, Goodyear was all the way up to 13th place. And should Scott Goodyear finish in the top 10 after missing most of the season and with only 14 laps of testing, it would be an accomplishment. Jack, I see you've got Sinardi with you. Yeah, he's changed into a and he's still not happy. Alex, tell us your version of what happened. Well, I, I simply didn't know you could get that angry in life. I lost, I lost a lot of time behind those guys, and uh, and I didn't have the intention to pass because it looked like I didn't have any collaboration. So, but the guy in front of me just break in the middle of the circuit and. Even God wouldn't have been able to avoid the accident. As you can see, he's still not very happy about it, gentlemen. While we've got it, let's update you on Michael Andretti. He came into the pits, Brian, but he thought he was going to be able to go the rest of the distance. When he radioed to Lee White, his crew chief, and said, is that the last stop? When Lee White came back and said, no, Michael, he said, then why did I pit? Why did I pit? 
Lee White very calmly said, just relax, everybody else pitted, we came in at the same time. And you know, the, the kind of story to that, Jack, is the leader pits, basically everybody always pits. Even Pinsky had the same strategy, but it does mean that there will be another pit stop in the race. Bobby, we saw Jan Magnuson in the red driver's suit. Jan Magnuson is safely out of the car. Now, finally, it seems to me a long delay moving Ribeiro's car from the end of Pacific as we continue under a full course yellow here in Vancouver. Well, I think what you see right there with, with uh, Ribeiro is, is that he wanted, he parked the car right in the middle of the road, wanting to get a tow back. In other words, they won't tow him back if you park out of the way. He wanted to get a tow back to see if the car could be fixed to get going again. And that, of course, caused the full course yellow. So now five cars out of this race, Moreno, Zanardi, Moore, Boisel, and Ribeiro. We'll return live to Vancouver in the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver. It's a 100-lap race right after this. Back live in Vancouver, Andre Ribeiro's car, and Ribeiro was running 12th, is being removed from the hairpin turn at the end of Pacific Boulevard. Been an entertaining race here this afternoon, Bobby Unser. The top Canadian is Paul Tracy. Scott Goodyear came in for a pit stop, is running 13th. Greg Moore is out of this race, and Ken Daniels, uh, you've got some information from the pits. Well, I'm here at uh, Bobby Rahal's pit, Brian, and during that uh, pit stop, they wanted good position for Bobby Rahal. Of course, Little Al went past. Uh, the team wasn't all that pleased, but they did take on full fuel down here. They radioed into Bobby Rahal saying the reason Little Al went past is because he didn't take on full fuel, and we did. This will be a race of fuel. This is what they're telling Bobby uh, toward the end, Brian. Well, it's a tough race here for fuel. It's a race that's tough on brakes, and it's a race that is tough on the tires as we remain under a full course yellow here in Vancouver. Doesn't it always seem that as you come to the last of this race that it ends up being a fuel story, pit strategy, and who's the best strategist of all but Roger Pinsky. Under a full course yellow gives us a chance to take a commercial break. We'll come back and go racing as you watch live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver, part of the Players Racing Presentation. Back live in Vancouver under a full course yellow on what has been a very exciting afternoon of racing. Michael Andretti leading Al Unser Jr., Bobby Rahal, the top Canadian is Paul Tracy running ninth, but there's a Good story in Jack Aroot before going down to you. It looks like they will be racing. Hang on just a minute. We'll see if they go racing as they come by. Not this time. One more lap by. So Jack Aroot, there's a good story concerning Canadian Scott Goodyear, who's running 13th and doing a good job this afternoon in as much as he hasn't had much time to race this year. There's his teammate, Robbie Gordon. At the controls of Walker Racing, and conventional wisdom had Scott Goodyear going to Walker Racing in a second car, teaming up with Jill DeFerrin. DeFerrin, we have been told, is con confirmed to go to go to Walker Racing with the Honda package. But here's where the wrench was thrown into the deal. After Walker had already negotiated with Scott Goodyear for a second car with Cosworth XB power, the powers that be at Honda said, no way, we're not going to allow the Ford XB in there, so you're not going to be able to run Goodyear. So Goodyear may be the odd man out. Well, that's exactly what we heard last night, Jack. I think you did a little bit better on your information or more of it than we got, but we got exactly the same thing. We, we also hear rumors that Scott Goodyear may be going to the rival IRL racing because he, a politics sometimes between engines and tires, everything that's going on now, sometimes doesn't fit everybody. And, and we realize the engine deals are very big, so we may miss Scott, Scott Goodyear from this series next year. And as I said earlier, Robbie Gordon, who's been a whiner and a complainer all season long, it's a very unhappy team, and Walker is leaving to go to NASCAR, but Jill DeFerrin leaving Jim Hall. No problems there, Bobby. Your good friend Hall simply says, I've had enough, but it's time to end a brilliant career. And we'll all be sad about that. Jim is... It's just, I hope everybody saw our show yesterday day because it almost brought tears to my eyes seeing all of what he's done for racing. Just such a nice man. Well, Jim Hall with the old chaparral. The yellow car right there is Gilles DeFerrin. That is the car owned by Jim Hall. Those are the best seats in the house. Apparently what Molson did, they held a contest had a tremendous number of entries. Wow. And the six winners got to stand wow. on top of that scaffolding 
right past the start finish area into the pits is Al Unser Jr. Let's go down to the pits as we're still under full course yellow kit. Well, Brian, they had him come in very quietly. Didn't want any of his team over the wall for him to come into the pits. Didn't want anybody else to know. They did it at the last second. So we talked about when they told Bobby Ray Hall's team earlier that little Al didn't take on full fuel. We did. That's why Al passed us. Well, now little Al came in and took on more fuel to complete it. And now he's back out. So that is a story there, Brian. Yeah, it's a story, but he comes back out in 11th place. It's now Michael Andretti, the leader, followed by Ray Hall, Vassar, Fittipaldi, Fernandez, Herta, Paul Tracy, seventh now. Jack Aroot? And that pit stop by Al Unser Jr. did not go unnoticed by Michael Andretti. As he pulled down pit road and he saw Al Unser Jr. pull in, he called the Lee White and he said, why is Michael pitting? He said, to take on more fuel. He said, well, what about our situation? He said, we need another yellow. You're going to have to make another stop. Now, Bobby Unser, what they've done is they've radioed in to go to position 12 under this caution. They told him once it goes back to green, go back up to six. So they're trying to conserve fuel right now. It could be a stop and go for your leader for fuel only late in the race. I think it will be, Jack, but uh, just let me just make a statement that I think Pitsky made a bad judgment call on that one. I think, I think that was a mistake. Putting Little Al back that far was not good to do. There's Little Al, and he is following Mark Blundell, who's 10th. Al Unser Jr. is now 11th. Fangio, there's quite a story. Juan Manuel Fangio is running ninth for the All-American team. There's Roger Pinsky, who had his driver come in. And we're not able to pick up what Pinsky's saying as they come around. One more lap is the signal under full course yellow. One more lap, and we'll be back to racing here in Vancouver. We understand that Jimmy Vassar may have suffered a violation in the pits, but we're not sure coming into the pits is car 16. Stefan Johansson, it could be a speed violation. We'll let you know there's some thought that maybe Jimmy Vassar was speeding in the pits. We'll return to racing here in Vancouver. This is live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy on CBC. just as the green flag comes out for the race leader Michael Andretti. Andretti across the start finish line followed by Bobby Rahal, Jimmy Vassar, Christian Fittipaldi is fourth, Adrian Fernandez is fifth, Brian Herta is running in sixth and Vassar will now drop out of the top ten as he goes into the pits. Paul Tracy has moved up and Paul Tracy is running sixth. Vassar being called in, they've decided that Pinsky is going to try to take Little Al all the way to the end without a fuel stop. Faster they brought, looks like Nancy brought him in and going to try to do the same thing go the rest of the way without a stop. Now, mistake that was made right there, don't bring Vassar in when it's going green. Terrible mistake. A bad mistake by the Chip Ganassi team drops Vassar from fourth place all the way down to 14th. The yellow car is Gilda Ferrin. He drives for Texan Jim Hall, and he is running seventh. You see all the cars slipping and sliding when they come out of the turns there. That's it's because Christian. they've been gathering up a lot of rubber on them when they're running slow. That red car is Christian Fittipaldi. He's third. You're on board with Bobby Rahal, who's running second, and you watch as he traces the race leader, Michael Andretti. Jack Aroot. Here's what's going to happen with Jimmy Vassar. They made a calculated move because they knew they were going to be given a penalty, a stop and go. Now, under cart rules, you cannot take on fuel during a stop and go. So what they said is we're going to be at the back in terms of track position anyways. Let's come in, take on fuel, then we'll come back in. We're not going to lose any more positions. We'll do the stop and go drive through, and we'll be able to go the distance. Well, Jack, I have to apologize to the Ganassi crew. That was a very good decision, in my opinion. I didn't realize that he was going to get a stop and go. But well, they really outsmarted the officials and everybody on that one. Well, I mentioned there was a possible violation for speed in the pits, and indeed there was by Jimmy Vassar. You saw your race leader, Michael Andretti, now by, look at this, less than a half second over Bobby Rahal, and right there is Christian Fittipaldi, who is running third for Newman Haas. Ken Daniels. Well, Brian Roger, Penske's been arguing with cart officials down here, saying Jimmy Vassar got service under a black flag, and you can't do it. At least that's the way Roger Penske saw it. Well, I'll tell you what, Bobby Unser, if any one was going to pick it up. You know it would be Roger Pinsky. That's for sure. So maybe right it wasn't here. so smart on Ganassi's part after all. On board with Bobby Rahal as he chases the race leader Michael Andretti. Look at this. 
Fittipaldi is third. Fernandez, who won in Toronto, is running fourth. Ryan Herta is running fifth. And Paul Tracy's driving a strong race for Roger Penske, running sixth. Now remember, with Ray Hall chasing Andretti right now, right there, it's pretty sure that Bobby Ray Hall is going to have to stop again. We didn't see him make one of those last-minute pit stops. But chasing right ahead of him, there's Michael Andretti. Now, we think, at least Jack Aroot and I do, that Michael probably will have to stop again. This team would like for him to be able to go all the way. But if he slows down in order to stay fuel, Ray Hall for sure going to take over the lead. We know he'll stop. But what about Michael? Now, if he keeps running ahead like this, we think he'll have to stop again. But little Al probably won't, or at least that's Pinsky's thoughts right now. Well, if you love racing, even if you're not a racing fan on a regular basis, you have to absolutely love the strategy and the excitement here in Vancouver. There's Gilles Deferrin as he pur uh, pursues, rather, Paul Tracy. Gilles Deferrin is running seventh, and Paul Tracy is running sixth. You know, sometimes I wonder, as we try to figure out these pitch strategies, and we never can figure the officials if people think we're crazy scientists or not, but we really are trying to figure it out like everybody else at home should be. That's car two, Al Unser Jr., who's moved up to ninth place after dropping back to 12th, and let's go down to Ken Daniels. Well, Brian, and they're telling uh, Paul Tracy, of course, a teammate with Little Al, telling Paul Tracy to make sure he gives Little Al room out there to get by if he needs to with the uh, points championship very much up for grabs. Al Unser Jr. trailing Jimmy Vassar by 21 points with one more race to go you get 20 for a victory one more race after this one today in Vancouver and that's next weekend at Monterey California Al Unser Jr. he's chasing one of Dan Gurney's cars that's Fangio who is running eight Fangio goes through there's Al Unser Jr. and right behind him we're on board with Robbie Gordon who is running in 10th place now that's Fangio that's one of the new Toyotas we haven't brought that up yet during this telecast and and what it is, we have both P.J. Jones and Fangio are in the new Toyotas. They're Dan Gurney Toyotas. In other words, they're Toyota factories just like the Mercedes factory is here, just like the Ford factory. They're all factories now in the engines, and I think it makes it kind of neat. This is Toyota's first year, and we've gotten better all year. First, they were running last place, and then second to last, and slowly they've been getting better. That's Fangio going through ahead of Al Unser Jr. and Robbie Gordon. Once again, Ken Daniels. Brian just spoke with Roger Penske. They're going to gamble here. They think that they can go without another fuel stop for little Al. We'll see. Oh, Bobby, that'll be interesting. Well, it's it's Penske and his strategies. You know, can he do it or can't he? You know, they've, they've won the race here the same way before. You can tell little Al's running low power. Anytime he can't get by the, the uh, Toyota there, Fangio, he's running low power. Now, he may have to just... Turn it up a little bit to get by him because that isn't a good place to be right now. There's Fangio. He's eight. Al Unser Jr. is ninth. And Robbie Gordon is tenth. They're on the 67th of 100 laps here in Vancouver. And the leader now by less than a second is Michael Andretti over Bobby Rahal. Christian Fittipaldi is running third and driving an outstanding race for Paul Newman and Carl Haas. Adrian Fernandez, the winner in Toronto, is running fourth. There are the top four cars right there. Look at that. Andretti. Rahal, Fittipaldi, and Fernandez, who looked like he might make a move on Fittipaldi, but did not do it. There goes Michael Andretti, followed by Bobby Rahal, Christian Fittipaldi, and Adrian Fernandez. Still, nose to tail, still running really hard. We've had a fantastic race so far. Jack Aroo. Bobby Unser, consider this fact. You're out and leading the race. Your crew chief is telling you to consider fuel. You look in the little mirrors, and all you see is the nose cone of Bobby Rahal. It's not that Michael Andretti is having any problems. It's that he's trying to conserve fuel. Now we've got a problem. We've got a problem indeed. That's Juan Fangio. Juan Fangio was running eighth the head of Al Unser Jr. And he's riding one of the chicanes into the first chicane down there. Spun out. You can see his rear tire up on the curbing. So that Very difficult for the tire cars to go around him. When they get that car out of there, incidentally, on the left over there is their runoff area. They'll open that up, let the record go out and get him. As soon as they'll probably have to go to a full course yellow. Now, if they go to full course yellow, watch for a lot of cars to come in. This could be a total strategy change in the race. 
while I'm watching the officials still no yellow flag out at the start finish area so it is still not a full course yellow Jackaroot and boy does Michael Andretti need a full course yellow he's already started asking for one because you know gentlemen if he can come in duck in and get some fuel that's what they need and now they're going for the yellow so it could be interesting guys they have now just gone to a full course yellow. That's Robbie Gordon also taken out of the race. Now you're on board with Gordon, who was running 10th. Let's watch. It looks like he got in there too deep. Tap Fangio spun the both of them out. Robbie's fault, if everything I saw there is the way it is. So under a full course yellow here in Vancouver, an exciting race this afternoon. We'll return with more live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy. Hey, Paul Tracy making a move and running sixth back in Vancouver after this. On board with Bobby Rahal, who's running second to Michael Andretti. Down through the start-finish area under a full course yellow. This is a 100-lap race here in Vancouver. Jack Arute, if you can hear me in the pits, uh, Michael Andretti and the fuel, he's the race leader. How does this affect him? Well, originally, we thought maybe Michael would come in. But according to Lee White in the conversations that he's had and the telemetry, as we say again, coming off of the computers, they are conserving enough fuel right now that Lee White is trying to convince Michael that they could stay out, go the distance without losing valuable track position. It still remains to be seen, but Bobby Unser, that's one of the great things about full course yellows. With the fuel mapping on these exotic engines, you really can save a lot of fuel. Yes, and also it means, Jack, that they do have to slow down. Now, the one question I would have on that is we saw before this yellow, Michael didn't slow down or didn't cut his power back at any at all. So I don't you think at that time he thought he was going to have to come in. Now they're changing their strategy because of this yellow. Now, they just more than double their mileage. In other words, they have to get 1.8 miles per gallon under the green. That's what they'll do. But under the yellow like this, I am more than double. So he may make it. Bobby, believe it or not, in the last lap or so before that full course yellow came out, they were working with the fuel mapping one more time, trying to change the dial to conserve the fuel. They really were in the cusp of trying to decide whether they could go the distance or not. One of the things that I find fascinating is all of us can monitor the radios, the communication between the drivers. Sometimes, as you know, a crew chief will throw a dummy out there knowing that one of the competitors is monitoring the radio in hopes that they can force a move in a different direction. So, Jack, the good news is now we'll stay with you for just a minute as we're under a full course yellow is that if they do stay out, they no longer have to conserve. He can go flat out and open up some distance over Bobby Rahal. I'll tell you what, Brian, nothing is a guarantee in this business. <laughs> Every time, especially with this crew, when you ask them, they've got a lot of bravado and they say, oh, yeah, we can go the distance. Then when the camera goes away, they mutter, we think we can. Well, we're under a full course yellow here in Vancouver, and we saw Scott Pruitt heading into the pits. The race leader, Michael Andretti, followed by Bobby Rahal. Davy Jones is into the pits. 21 cars are racing right now in Vancouver. 27 started here today. Let's have a complete rundown. Michael Andretti, the race leader. Paul Tracy's driven a smart race today. Moved up from 14th place. Gilles DeFerrin drives for Texan Jimmy Hall. Al Unser Jr. came in. It was costly. He's working his way back up. And I'll tell you, Jack Aroots talked about it, and Bobby, you have. Uh, give some credit to Scott Goodyear for a big drive here this afternoon. Andre Ribeiro, he's one of the young Turks that's uh, been warned. He's been fined. He seems to be behaving himself here today. Out of the race, well, the big story is Greg Moore from Maple Ridge, British Columbia. He is out with engine problems. Moreno is out. Sonardi was out, taken out by P.J. Jones when he was leading the race and the only accident so far. Boisel is out, Scott Pruitt is out, Ribeiro is out, Guzelman is out, Magnuson replacing Emerson Fittipaldi is out of the race, as is Juan Manuel Fangio, and he is the cause of this full course yellow. And it's tough for Dan Gurney because Fangio is running well and running just inside the top ten. Right now, remember, when they go green, the cars are going to be very slippery. When you see them whipping back and forth just before they go to green flag, that's when they're trying to, to take off the top rubber off the tires. There's Boisel sitting there. Look at how sad he looks. He's he's really dejected. He's not had a good year this year. He's, he's not going to be with that team. It's rumored next year. 
quite a step for look at him. It just, you could just feel inside what he must feel like. You and see the guy trying to grind off. I start to tell you the rubber off the top. What these tires do, they're so sticky these days with all the competition between Firestone and Goodyear that they pick up the tire like a sponge picking up stuff. They pick up the rubber and they're trying to grind it off so it'll be good traction when it goes from yellow to green. There's Bobby Rahal followed by Christian Fittipaldi. They are running second and third under a full course yellow. We'll take another break here at Maine. This is the 1996 Molson Indy on CBC. live in Vancouver the green flag has just come out we're back racing it's Michael Andretti by less than a second over Bobby Rahal but Al Unser Jr. is making a move there's Deferrin there's Unser Jr. and right behind Al Unser Jr. is Paul Tracy so Tracy has dropped down a position let's have one more look that's whoa, Tracy car whoa, three and he whoa. appeared to have been bumped by Gilles Deferrin that is the yellow car driving for Jim Hall. There's Al Jr. So Tracy has dropped down behind Al Unser Jr. And Tracy is coming into the pits. He bumped the wall right there a little bit. And he's probably coming in to get a check. Could even have a flat tire. So Paul Tracy drops out of the top ten. The top ten being Andretti, Rahal, Fittipaldi, Fernandez, Herta. Jill DeFerrin is sixth. Al Unser Jr. seventh. Jimmy Vassar is eighth. Scott Goodyear is now the top Canadian ninth as Moore is out of the race. And in the pits is Paul Tracy. And I believe from where I'm sitting, Tracy is getting out of the car. They know he's still in the car, but it is an awful long pit stop. And uh, here's Tracy out of the car. It's the end of the day for the second Canadian. Paul Tracy will join Greg Moore on the sidelines. Two Canadians out. One is still running. And that is Scott Goodyear. Goodyear running ninth, driving for Derek Walker. Looks like Paul broke something. I think that had to do with the confrontation. I don't think he got punted from behind or hit from behind. I think something on the car might have broken there. There's Brian Herta, who's running fifth, followed by Gilles DeFerrin, the yellow car behind DeFerrin, Al Unser Jr. and Jimmy Vassar. There's Al Jr. There's Fernandez, followed by Brian Herta, DeFerrin. There is Al Jr. running seventh, and running eighth is Jimmy Vassar. Vassar and Al Unser Jr. fighting it out for the overall Drivers' Championship on the PPG IndyCar circuit. Jack Aroot? Well, let's tell you what Bobby Unser was talking about on restarts, and we're not saying that this happened to Paul Tracy, but you see these little pieces of rubber here? We in the racing fraternity call them marbles. They're thrown off of a set of tires, but during a caution, what will happen is they will actually find their way out of the tires. See, it'll just stick rubber to rubber. It'll put a wheel and a tire completely out of round. All of a sudden, you don't have the handling that you thought you had. It takes a high speed to be able to take them off when the car's traveling around. Then you get your tires clean. But we're not saying that's what happened to Tracy. We're just trying to illustrate what it's like under caution. You gather up a lot of marbles. Thank you, Jack. They've completed 76 of a scheduled 100 laps, and it's Michael Andretti. There's Adrian Fernandez fourth. Ryan Hurd a fifth. Jules DeFerrin is sixth. And Al Unser Jr. who's seventh. But the leader is Michael Andretti. Now by two and a half seconds over Bobby Rahal and by six seconds over Christian Fittipaldi. On board with Stefan Johansson, who's running 11th and pursuing Robbie Gordon. There's car 15. That's Scott Goodyear running 9th. His teammate right behind him, Gordon, is 10th. And Stefan Johansson running 11th. So Scott right. Goodyear, who's had injuries, has not had much time in a car and told you and I last night, Bobby Unser, that he's only had 14 laps of practice coming here to Vancouver. He was anything but optimistic yesterday, but he is having a big afternoon today in Vancouver. Well, the main thing is he isn't a quitter. He's got a little bit rough, and he just keeps on going. That's what he's doing now, and he just needs more time. You know when a driver gets hurt in the middle of the year or the start of the year, and he loses a lot of races... It just goes to show practice is what makes perfect, not desire. It takes a lot of practice, too. There's Jimmy Vassar pursuing Al Unser Jr. Jr. is two, and Vassar is the red target car behind him. Jimmy Vassar with a 21-point lead right there in the driver's standings. Coming to Vancouver, you get 20 points for a victory, and there's one more race after Vancouver. That's Monterey next weekend, so... You can figure out the mathematics. It's not tough at all. Vassar running eighth. Allenser Jr. is running seventh. 
Little Al right there, the red and white car just went by. Pinsky's strategy didn't work. It started out that he was going to make that pit stop and, and suffer and go back like he is now, but unfortunately the yellow came after that. Put everybody back into the same position. Problem with Pinsky's deal is he's got Little Al back in the field. Very difficult to pass. On board with Jimmy Vassar as he pursues Al Unser Jr. And speaking of Al Unser Jr., his teammate Paul Tracy standing by with Ken Daniels. Thank you, Brian and Paul Tracy out of this race. Paul, what happened? Well, it looked like it was just tight quarters down there. Uh, looked like uh, Herda bumped into the back of Fernandez, and I was kind of right there as well, and they ended up swinging in over into me, and I just touched the wall and uh, put a little bend in the suspension. So it was disappointing. We had a good car today. The Marlboro car was working good. Trying to take some points from Vassar for, for Al, but, uh, you know, next week. Your thoughts very quickly. Does any driver have an advantage out there right now from what you've seen? It's hard to say. I think Michael Michael looks strong, but uh, you know he's going to be the guy to beat. He's out front. It's always tough to pass. So. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thanks. Brian. Thank you, Ken. Across the start-finish line comes Adrian Fernandez. There's Brian Herta, followed by Gilles DeFerrin. They're running fourth, fifth, and sixth, respectively. And down on the Pacific Boulevard, Al Unser Jr. right on the heels of Gilles DeFerrin. Followed by Jimmy Vassar, Scott Goodyear is ninth, Robbie Gordon is tenth. Jack Aroot. I'm not real good with mathematics, but by my calculation, should the race end the way it is, guess who would leapfrog into second place in the points? Your leader, Michael Andretti. So this thing is still up for grabs. Well, Jack, that's a good point, because Andretti, we talk about Little Al being 22 points down. Michael Andretti mathematically can still catch Jimmy Vassar on board with your race leader, Michael Andretti. They've now completed 80 of 100 laps. Down Pacific Boulevard comes Andretti. His lead, 1.78 seconds now over Bobby Rahal. Five seconds over his teammate, Christian Fittipaldi. Yes, and being out in front like this, he has no traffic until he comes around the lap to lap cars. And of course, every time there's a yellow, they all bunch back up. So it's really made it nice for Michael. But besides that, there's there's Mario, his daddy. His dad, Mario Andretti, looking on. He's probably more nervous than Michael is. At any rate, Michael's had it really nice all day by being in the lead. Whereas Pinsky's strategy is put little Al back. It just goes to show you, strategy is important, and a lot of us just plain guessing sometimes. Well, I tell you what, Jack Aroot said if it ended like this, Andretti would move into second place. He would be less than 20 points behind Jimmy Vassar, and you get 20 points for a victory. The most you can get at any race is 22, 20 for first place, one for having the pole position, and one for leading the most laps. There's one more race to go. That's next weekend in California. Michael Andretti, now by three seconds, there's the second place car. That's Bobby Rahal, three seconds back. There's the third place car. That's Christian Fittipaldi. And behind Christian Fittipaldi will come Adrian Fernandez. That's the fourth place car followed by Ryan Herta goes through and then Gilles DeFerrin and Alan Sujun. Yes, and you know, after all the points deal that you give us and tell us what all the chances are for this and that and the other, who's worrying the most? Jimmy Vassar. No matter what, he can't seem to get far enough ahead to keep it from going down to the last race. That really worries. That makes ulcers grow sometimes. Here's Adrian Fernandez, who's a native of Mexico City, and running fourth. Adrian Fernandez makes his North American home in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. That's in suburban Detroit. And, of course, he won the race in Toronto. There's Brian Herta, who's fifth, followed by Gilles DeFerrin, Al Unser Jr., and Jimmy Vassar, the points leader, is currently running in seventh place. Adrian Fernandez right there in the... Mexican colored car that goes by the Tecate car. That's Steve Horn. He's the big reason for that car going so fast besides the driver. Steve Horn, in my opinion, runs one of the nicest teams that I've ever seen in motor racing. He's slow and easy, but he's very thorough and super, super smart. Bobby Unser, the seventh year we've worked as a team here in Vancouver. And in a way, one of the cleanest and one of the most exciting a tremendous finish with Bobby Rahal within striking distance of Michael Andretti and right behind Rahal come Fittipaldi, Fernandez, Herta, Gilles Deferrin and 
Al Unser Jr. And speaking of Michael Andretti, across the start-finish line, on board with the race leader. And if you're just joining us, this is the shot that Bobby Unser says most shows what a driver sees when he's racing. Now, you want to see what it looks like at 190 miles an hour? That's it. And here's Ray Hall. It looks good, too, but nothing is as good as Michael's. His camera is on the roll bar right up behind him. Ray Hall, of course, is down a bit further to the right. Here's another one. That's, that's uh, Christian Fittipaldi. That's right up on top of the roll bar, just exactly like Michael's is. Now, that's what a driver sees going through that chicane. Now, here, look. Well, anyway, I was going to show you what it looked like going under the tunnels. It's kind of dark in there. Well, we had a chance to see shots from the first three cars. Great job by our producer, Lawrence Kimber, and directors, Jim Marshall and Chris Elias. When we get on the next straightaway, we will do it one more time. Al Unser Jr., I'm not sure if he banged a wheel or something came out of the engine. Al Unser Jr., with a puff of smoke, is running seventh. But what we are going to do on the next straightaway is take you on board. Now you're on board with Michael Andretti. He he is the race leader. You're on board with Bobby Rahal, who's running second. There's Andretti just going through in front of him. And now you're on board with Christian Fittipaldi, who's third. Let's see if he can see Bobby Rahal. No! Rahal is out of sight. He does not have Rahal in view. Do you suppose it looks like CBC tried to plan who had these cameras or tried to raise this race? First, second, and third, all of our cameras down there. Well, I tell you, a great job by our production crew, the technical people, the production people working here in Vancouver. There's Brian Herta. Now you're on board with Jimmy Vassar as Vassar is chasing Brian Herta. Vassar is currently eighth, Herta is seventh, and Al Unser Jr. has moved up to sixth. It should be a tremendous finish here in Vancouver. We have one more break, and then we'll wrap up the race as you watch live coverage of the 1996 Molson Indy, part of the Players World Team of Racing on CBC. Back live in Vancouver, the race leader Michael Andretti completing 87 of 100 laps, followed by Ray Hall, Fittipaldi, Fernandez won in Toronto, Mark Blundell a bit of a surprise, but the big surprise for Canadian fans is Scott Goodyear, the lone Canadian still running. There's Bobby Rahal, who is running second. And let's see, look at the gap from Rahal to Christian Fittipaldi, who is third. There is Brian Herta. Brian Herta is now in seventh, followed by Jimmy Vassar, the overall points leader. If I can bring in Jack Aroot. Jack, with just over 10 laps remaining here in Vancouver, what does the fuel story look like? Well, it's still a little iffy down here in Michael Andretti's pit, but behind me, Lee White is constantly charting. I asked him if he thought that they could go the distance now he feels a little more well he feels a little better inside he says yeah i think we can go that full course yellow turn the trick for them ken and jack not a concern for bobby ray hall whatsoever they took on full fuel earlier when little al didn't and since then they've been fine they're telling bobby just run hard you're okay go for it bob brian all right well now that means that two of them we think well one of them, that's Ken's man, Bobby Rahal. We think he's going to make it for sure. Not too, they're not too sure about Michael. Roger Pinsky with little Al. I feel pretty sure with him that he's going to be all right. Jimmy Vassar, the guy right here that we're on board with now, has the biggest worry. He'd like Michael, of course, to fall out. He would like little Al to fall out so he could have a championship guaranteed. They, of course, would like to see him park, wouldn't they, Brian? They sure would. And if it stays like this, on board with Vassar, who's running eighth, if it finishes like this, Michael Andretti, whom you're looking at, right there in the Kmart car number six winning, it will all be decided one week from today in Laguna Seca, California. And Michael Andretti has already scored one more point today. He has led the most laps so far. And sometimes that one point is one big thing. The championships get down so close. There's Michael passing that car. He had to go underneath him. That was a lap car right there. He's going by. And it just shows you again with that beautiful in-car shot that we had, the in-car shot that we have there. But just think, sometimes it goes down to where at one point it could be worth, what, two or three million dollars? It could happen, you know? Michael passing the Delco car. That's Davy Jones driving for the friend of yours. Red Gallus of Albuquerque. What a very close friend of mine. Guy that little Al used to drive for, incidentally. 
that's Adrian Fernandez. Adrian Fernandez. Adrian Fernandez is currently running fourth. Hey, you talked about uh, Little Al. Let's watch this. That's Adrian Fernandez at the end of Pacific Boulevard. Oh, my. That right behind him is DeFerrin. So now watch, he has to go. Fourth. And Fernandez had to go way around, make a long lap around it, that runoff area, which really cost him a bunch right there. And that means Gilles DeFerrin has moved up. There's Brian Herta. Brian Herta pursued by Jimmy Vassar. And right now, let's go down to Ken Daniels, who's standing by with Rick Mears. Kenny? Yeah, in the Penske pit, and we wondered, uh, Rick, about Little Al's uh, pin strategy. Was it a mistake not full fuel when he passed Bobby Rahal and then having to come back later, which dropped him back in the pack? Was there any error made in pit strategy? No, at the end of that yellow, we were hoping that, uh, you know, we decided to come in and, and top up with fuel, which would get us to the end. And uh, we figured the other guys were going to have to make one more stop. But then when that last yellow came out, that gave them enough laps to save enough fuel to, looks like, go all the way. So if you had to do it all over again, you do it the same way? Under the same conditions, yes. Okay, he's okay for fuel the rest of the way, though. Yes. Brian? Well, I can don't believe him on that. They do the same thing. I know Rick Mears better than that. What he's trying to tell you is if they didn't know any more than he knows now, he would do the same thing. But believe me, he wouldn't do that. You're looking at Brian Herta in the shell car as they come through turn 10 under the start-finish straightaway, followed by Jimmy Vassar. Herta is running sixth, and Vassar is running seventh. Michael Andretti's the race leader, and Michael Andretti can really make a race out of this driver's championship should he win here today and Vassar stay down in seventh place. It would all be decided one week from today in California. You can see how slippery the track is when you see, like with Vassar right there in the red car locking up his brakes going going in smoking his tires. You can tell that means the track is slippery, the tires are hot, there's not a lot of traction left. That's the reason they don't do, do as much attempting at passing right now as they do earlier on or after they change the tire. The track is slippery, the tires are slippery. The race leader is Michael Andretti. Andretti's lead is now, there's Andretti, the lead is 3.4 seconds, and that is Robbie Gordon with P.J. Jones, and boy, that's where Jones had the trouble earlier with Zanardi in turn 10. So it's Michael Andretti, his lead, now five seconds over Bobby Rahal. There's P.J. Jones driving for Dan Gurney, and P.J. Jones is currently running in 13th place. I think one of the nicest things for Toyota, even though they're not way up in the race, they haven't been competitive here, they are more competitive than they've been in the past, and so far the engines have run all day long without any problems. That means that they're making a lot of gains. For a while they have even had engine problems. But remember, Honda's first year looked like a disaster. Bobby Rahal pursued by Christian Fittipaldi. There's Rahal running second. There's Fittipaldi running third. And Jill DeFerrin in the yellow car has yet to cross the finish line. DeFerrin now just crossing the finish line. Pursued by Al Unser Jr. who's running in fifth place. So the top five, we run them down. Michael Andretti, Bobby Rahal, Christian Fittipaldi. This man, DeFerrin, is fourth. Al Unser Jr. is fifth. There's Brian Herta, who's running sixth. And right behind him is Jimmy Vassar, who is seventh. Adrian Fernandez, they list as running eighth, but I believe he's dropped down to tenth place. On board now with Jimmy Vassar. You wouldn't think that Jimmy Vassar would be trying so hard, because he's in a point deal. You wouldn't think he'd be trying so hard to pass. But, boy, he's working it hard. He's not going to give. He'd pass that Herta now no matter what it took. Vassar had hoped here in Vancouver today to wrap up the PPG IndyCar driver's title. Barring something unforeseen, that will not happen as Michael Andretti will remain very much in the picture, as will Al Unser Jr., who is but two places ahead of the man you're watching, Jimmy Vassar, as Jimmy Vassar chases Brian Herta. Brian Herta, the 26-year-old teammate of this man, Bobby Rahal. There's the third-place car, Christian Fittipaldi. And I'll tell you what, as we look at Rahal running second, Fittipaldi is right behind him. They're both way now behind, five seconds behind Michael Andretti. It's a big day here in Vancouver for Carl Haas and Paul Newman as young Christian Fittipaldi is driving for Newman Haas as is of course the race leader Michael Andretti. Now we've got five laps left roughly to go. Let's all kind of hold our breath and see who was lying and who was being straight here on all these deals with a few. Or let's see if they all make it because 
This is always the part that I enjoy the most. There's Michael Andretti, and he is about to lap P.J. Jones, who is running in 13th position. Down Pacific Boulevard, great place to pass under braking, and that's exactly what Michael Andretti does. And when I say pass under braking, what I mean is you hesitate a little longer to get on the brake, you dive into the corner at a higher speed, and on these street courses, you must pass under braking. There are no long, fast areas on which to pass. Now, and BJ did really well. He got over and uh, didn't give him over abundant amount of room, but he gave him plenty of room. He was very thoughtful over that, realizing, of course, he didn't want any more incidents like it happened earlier. I said yesterday, I'm not sure it's an oxymoron, but a contradiction passing under braking. But uh, Bobby Unser, as you explained, on these street courses, that's exactly what you have to do. Now, and you have to be very brave to pass sure. on the braking. It's just where the passing is. And a lot of times when you see a guy follow a guy for a long time and nothing happens, and all of a sudden he's that boy, he goes into the turn deeper. That's what you're calling your passing under braking. That's what he has to do. There's Michael right now. Going down in, no problems, doing really well past P.J. Michael has slowed down a little bit, too, trying to guarantee his position a little bit, but that's the place to pass on road circuits. In fact, I think that that's the part that makes the racing the best on road circuits. They've completed 96 of 100 laps. The lead is now 3.87 seconds. This is the leader, Michael Andretti. It's 3.87 seconds over Bobby Rahal and nearly six seconds over the third place car, his teammate Christian Fittipaldi. If you're just joining us, two Canadians, Paul Tracy and Greg Moore out of the race. The lone Canadian and doing very well is Scott Goodyear who's running ninth and driving for Derek Walker. This is Jimmy Vassar still trying to get by Brian Herta. I tell you what, that Vassar's the most stubborn guy I've ever seen. He, <laughs> I don't know if he knows how much he has to gain from this or not, but he's absolutely running that Herta just as hard as he can. Vassar's, of course, needing a championship again. He has a lot to lose. You know, and yet he's still trying to pass that guy. I don't see that he has that much to gain, you know? I gotta tell you, folks, as we're on board with Vassar, as he pursues Brian Herta onto Pacific Boulevard, my partner here, Bobby Unser, is jumping up and down, banging me on the shoulder when he saw Vassar. And here's what I say, passing under braking. He will not make a pass here, but here's where you like to pass. You hold off. Get on the brakes a little later than your competitor and try to go underneath them and Jimmy Don't Vassar. do it there. Oh, Don't bad do place it there. to try. I thought he was going to try that one. That's that first chicane where we have so many problems. Too many problems there, but, but Vassar is still trying to get by him. I'm telling you, when they come down for the checkered flag, he's still going to be doing it. it might just be a stubbornness thing that's hitting now, Brian. Brian Herta. Jimmy Vassar, the best fight on the race course right now. There's the race leader, though, Michael Andretti. Michael Andretti has won four times this year. Michael won in Nazareth, he won in Milwaukee, he won in Detroit, and he also won two weeks ago in that bumper car show at Road America in Wisconsin. So That's Michael it. Andretti could win for the fifth time, and Bobby, he could win for the third time here in Vancouver. This is the seventh year for the Vancouver Molson Indy, and remember, Al Unser Jr. has won four times, and Michael Andretti has won twice. Well, I think he's going to. That's Johnstone he's trying to get by. Let's see if he gets by there. He got by there all right. That was... Uh, Parker that was still running 11th, so yes. he's lapped the 11th place car. And that was the turn coming in just to where we are now. We're right here where we are. There's the white flag. Now let's see. Everybody hold their breath. Is anybody going to run out of fuel? White flag means one lap to go in Vancouver. Michael Andretti is the leader. There's Bobby Rahal going by Parker Johnstone. He's second on board with Rahal. Now, can Bobby Rahal get a little trouble with Parker Johnstone? Can Bobby Rahal reel in Michael Andretti? I don't think so. The only place to pass, and we're on the last lap, would be under braking on turn 10. Keep in mind, Michael could run out of fuel the last lap. Rahal knows that. You never quit. Second place, first place, hey, first is worth everything right there. Michael Andretti trying to win for the fifth time in 1996 and the third time in Vancouver. Michael Andretti into the tenth and final turn and into the start-finish area. He will not run out of fuel here this afternoon. He could coast right there. Michael Andretti wins. There's Bobby Rahal finishing second.
Christian Fittipaldi now crossing the finish line, finishes third. The yellow car is Gilles de Ferrin. He'll be fourth. Al Unser Jr. will be fifth. And here's the battle for sixth and seventh. And I don't think Vassar is going to catch Brian Herta. No, sir. Across the start-finish line comes Ray Hall's young teammate, Brian Herta, to finish sixth. And Jimmy Vassar will finish seventh. I'll tell you what. The race for the championship is still very much alive. It will all be decided next week in California. Plus Michael's fifth win of the year. Now that is just amazing with competition as hard as it is now. He's really been hot. He hasn't run away with anything this year, but boys, he had a good hot streak. Well, Michael Andretti's always had great success in Toronto. He's had great success here in Vancouver, so the domination of this event it's in its seventh year the winner is Michael Andretti that means he has three victories and your nephew Al Unser Jr. has four in the seven-year history of this Vancouver Molson Indy very 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 good race Brian I think that this was the finest race I've ever seen at Vancouver if you don't mind my saying so We'll return. We'll talk to the top drivers and the top Canadian. There you see the top eight. It's official. Michael Andretti wins the Molson Indy Vancouver. And back live in Vancouver, Michael Andretti wins the Molson Indy Vancouver for the third time. And we remind you, the closed captioning for the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver is brought to you by your friends at Mr. Transmission. Refer to the yellow pages for a location nearest you. No transmission problems today for this man. The winner standing by with Ken Daniels. Ken? Yeah, Brian, no problems for Michael. And Michael right into uh, second uh, place in the points. How do you feel now? Uh, very much in contention. Very much. You know, we're there. We're, we're going after him now. You know, I feel great. It was just a great day. Everything went perfect. Uh, the car was good. It's good enough to win. And uh, pit stops are perfect. You talk about pit stops, and we talked about fuel strategy all day. How much of a concern was it for you? Well, we did a good job. We called it just right. Um, that last yellow definitely helped us all then, but I still think we could have made it even though we, we did, you know, even if we didn't get that last yellow. How do you feel? Because uh, you crashed at uh, Elkhart uh, as Mario comes in beside you. You crashed at Elkhart prior to coming here, and uh, last time you did that in 94, you still finished third. Maybe it's a, a good omen for you. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't want to keep doing that. You know, it's... Uh, I was okay, a little achy at times, but uh, when you're in first place, it, uh, you don't really think about it. Uh, Mario, your thoughts? So while we have uh, Michael, your thoughts on the race that Michael ran today? Well, I was never so happy sitting up there on a perch and doing nothing, but really watching him doing a fantastic job. I mean, it's just uh, really, really a beautiful day for us, and uh, everyone just worked perfectly, the pits, the crew, and, um, you know, it was just a pleasure to watch today. Hey, in the press conference the other day, you said to uh, everybody else, just sit back and let my boy win. Well, they did, maybe. No? <laughs> they listened. <laughs> Hi, everybody at the lake. <laughs> Mario, Michael, congratulations to you both. Right now, let's go to Jack Arute, who's standing by with a guy who ran a very strong race today, Bobby Rahal. Jack? Another podium finish. And how close were you to winning this thing? At times, I thought uh, <laughs> fairly close. I couldn't seem to get a, a break in traffic. Uh, Michael got the traffic better than I did, and that really hurt me here on a number of occasions. And we were concerned about fuel, so I was short shifting there with about 20 laps to go. Michael got a little bit ahead of me, but then they said, okay, we're going to make it. I think we had three tenths of a gallon at the end there, so it was still close even then, but I tried to run him down, got close, and then just got held up again a little bit, and that's all Michael needed. Now, you're one of the few, in fact, the only owner driver in IndyCar. Now, what does the driver, Bobby Rahal, go back to the pits and say to the owner, Bobby Rahal? <laughs> Well, uh, the owner will say he's got to do a better job next time, but uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, you know, it, it's been a long year for us, and the, the performances have really come in the latter half, and, uh, you know, uh, Brian had a good run today, I guess, finished six from what I hear, and, uh, you know, two in the top six, not bad for, our, for a first-year yeah. team, and, um, um, you know, we want to win yet. I'm not satisfied with seconds by any means, but at least we're at the right end of the race. So now, what can we look for in Laguna Seca next week? You got anything special there? Uh, we did a tire test, a bunch of us, and I think Goodyear's going to have a very good tire there. Brian was on the front row there last year. I think we had a very good test there. Um, you know, I'm optimistic. It's a beautiful new circuit, so I'm optimistic of our chances. Um, you know, things look good. I just want to say before we shut off here, uh, hi to Debbie and Graham, Jay, Michaela, and Sam, everybody back home. Love you. We've heard from first. We've heard from second. Now we're going to hear from third. Ken? Thank you, Jack. And the third podium finish uh, this year for Christian Fittipaldi. He was a second earlier and now finishes third. Uh, Christian, 
Great day today for you and a great day for Newman Haas. Tell me about it. Yeah, I think it was a great day for the team. Uh, Michael really drove very well. It was a hard day for me in the office because I started 14th, so I had to work my, my way around a couple of cars, make sure that my nose was clean all the time, and uh, go for the finish. The car worked well the whole race, and I'm very happy. We just had some small problems yesterday in the time trials. That's why I started way behind, but... Apart from that, I'm very happy, and the team did a great job. Yeah, and even though you and Michael are on the same team, I know you all run your own race, but you knew that if Michael could get up into position here, which he is, he's still got a shot at the Drivers' Championship. Oh, yeah, I think uh, we're going to work well, uh, well together, and if I can help Michael, I'll definitely do that, because if one day he can help me, I think he's going to do the same to me. I think we have a lot of respect among each other in the team, and we work pretty well together. Christian, thank you. Thank you. Christian Fittipaldi, back to Brian. So it's official, Michael Andretti, Bobby Rahal, and Christian Fittipaldi, the top three, the top Canadians. Scott Goodyear was ninth, the Molson Indy Vancouver, more after this. Back live in Vancouver, Bobby Unser said to me during the commercial break, I'll tell you what, this was one outstanding race. The presentation's coming up in just a minute. Listen, my friend, uh, Bobby recently underwent back surgery. We appreciate you coming up. I'm slapping you on the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's sore here. You've got to catch a flight, not to New Mexico, but to your new home in Mexico, is that right? Yes, I have some work to do tomorrow. Moving into a new house down there. All right, before you go, we're going to let you go in just a minute. Uh, some final thoughts on this race. Well, I just have to tell you, it's kind of like we predicted, or at least I predicted earlier. The old cats that been around a long time, <laughs> they won, they were outstanding. The new Lions still didn't do quite that good. But overall, I think maybe it's the nicest and most exciting and most competitive race I've ever seen here at Vancouver. And I just think it's just lovely being here with weather like this. Love it. All right, we love having you here. We'll see you next summer for the Molson Indy. I'll see you during the winter down south, but have a safe trip to Mexico. Keep inviting me back, because I'll come. We'll invite you. Three-time Indy 500 champion Bobby Unser. He called it. He said the uh, the veterans will do it here today. Andretti wins. Ray Hall second. We're ready for the official ceremonies. Welcome to the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver Victory Podium, where in a few moments we'll meet the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver winning drivers. But first, it's my privilege to introduce our official presenters from Molson, the President and Chief Executive Officer, who I can tell you is an avid and knowledgeable, enthusiastic racing fan, Mr. John Barnett. Also, from Molson, the Western Division President, Blair Shire. And now, let's meet and congratulate the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver winning drivers, team owner, and they will receive the Molson trophies handcrafted by Henry Berkson son. Finishing in third place from Newman Haas Racing, would you please welcome Christian Fittipaldi. Christian, congratulations on third place. Tell us a little bit about your afternoon. Well, it was hard in the office this afternoon. Like, <laughs> starting from uh, way behind, I had to make sure that uh, everything worked okay, especially the first 20, 30 laps. There was a lot of traffic out there. I managed to pass, I think, two or three cars right in the first 20 laps. And then after that, the team did a wonderful job in the pits. Uh, my engineer was on top of me to take uh, to make me save maximum fuel as possible so that we didn't have to stop uh, like for uh, last time third time and I'm pretty happy Mike did a great job and definitely Newman Haas is gonna come charging for the last race to try and see if we can take uh, this uh, title home congratulations on your fine drive this afternoon Christian Fittipaldi <laughs> finishing in second place from team Ray Hall would you please welcome to victory podium Bobby Rahal. Another race in Vancouver, Bobby, another visit to Victory Podium. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I don't know, Canada's awfully good to me and has been, especially Vancouver over the years. Love coming here. It was a fun race. Uh, we tried to run Michael down there at the end and uh, just ran out of time, but he did a super job and my hat's off to him. Big thanks to my crew, did a great job today, and we were running on fumes at the end, but uh, we made it, so uh, thanks again. Congratulations, Bobby. 
Any one of these drivers today will tell you that to win a PPG IndyCar World Series event takes a strong team. Accepting the winning team trophy for Newman Haas is the owner of that team, co-owner of the team, Mr. Carl Haas. Carl? Congratulations, Carl. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's, it's great to be back in Canada, Vancouver. We love the place. We love Canada. And uh, uh, Michael did a terrific job. Congratulations, Michael. And Christian really starting it way back there and uh, where he started towards the back. He really hung in there. And mostly, I'd, I'd really like to thank our crew from both cars. They did a wonderful job, and uh, it was a great race, and we're very, very happy. It's good to be here in Canada. Thank you very much. And now, the winning driver of the seventh annual Molson Indy Vancouver, his third win in Vancouver, and his fifth win of the 1996 season, also from Newman Haas Racing, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Andretti. So, Michael, you take it, thinking about taking out citizenship? Yeah, really. I love Canada. I tell you, I love coming here. I love driving here, and I uh, uh, can't wait. Can't wait for next year. How big an issue was the fuel for you? Because you turned some fast laps towards the end of the race, then it looked like you might have been backing off a little bit. Were you trying to save fuel? No, I was letting actually Bobby set the pa the pace. Uh, we were okay on fuel, and uh, when Bobby slowed down, I just slowed down. I wanted to make sure I brought bring the car home, and uh, uh, you know, it just that's all I was doing. Congratulations, Michael. It was sure fun to watch. We enjoyed the show you put on. Congratulations to everybody who thank took you. part. And uh, took, well done. Uh, well, thanks. I just want to thank the whole team, the whole Kmart and Havilland team. They did a great job today. And uh, Ford engine ran great all day. Uh, five wins for it. It's, uh, it's great. It is indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all of the sponsors of the 1996... Michael Andretti wins, followed by Bobby Rahal and Christian Fittipaldi. The top Canadian, Scott Goodyear, was ninth. Greg Moore and Paul Tracy did not finish the race. We'll return live to Vancouver and more of the 96 Molson Indy Vancouver right after this. Well, the Players Series of IndyCar Racing presenting the Molson Indy Vancouver. There's a look at the start-finish area. The presentations have just taken place. The crowd leaving more than 70,000 today, 166,000 for the three days. Let's have a look at the official placings today. Michael Andretti winning for the fifth time this year. Christian Fittipaldi, his teammate is third. Jill DeFerrin driving for Jimmy Hall. Al Unser Jr. still alive. Jimmy Vassar has not wrapped up the Drivers' Championship. Adrian Fernandez won in Toronto, the lone Canadian to finish. Scott Goodyear, both Moore and Tracy forced out of this race. P.J. Jones knocked Zanardi out early, came on to finish 13th. Hiro Mashusta, there's a surprise, finishing 15th. Jordan from Mexico City. Johansson's been on the podium here before. Paul Tracy did not finish today. Neither did Fangio, Pruitt, or Ribeiro. And a tough day for Greg Moore. He was running so well, mechanical problems in front of the hometown fans. Well, we've talked about the race for the Drivers' Championship. There's, it's simple. There's one more race. It's a week from today in California. The most you can get for a victory is 22 points. 20 for winning, one for most laps led, and one for the pole. So that means Michael Andretti, Al Unser Jr., both still have a chance to catch Jimmy Vassar, and it shows you how costly it was Zanardi dropping out of the race because with a good finish today and he was leading, he would have been alive in the fight for the overall Drivers' Championship. Well, right now, I think as we wrap it up here, as I say, Bobby Unser's already headed to the airport this afternoon. We have a couple of minutes. I'd like to get a final word from the fellas that did such a great job in the pits today, Ken Daniels. And Jack Aroot, let's begin with you. I know you're standing together. Jack, you did a football game for ABC in Denver yesterday. Got here at 12.30 in the morning. Good to have you here north of the border. I'll tell you what, it was a lot of fun, but I just can't believe Bobby Unser building a house in Mexico. What's going to happen to the economy there? Well, he's not doing it himself. Let me tell you, he's got somebody doing it for him, believe me. Now, they come down to the final race of the season in Laguna Seca. Uh, Michael Andretti crashed there on Tuesday. Seemed to be okay here, probably.
probably most comfortable in the car. Uh, what are your thoughts, especially after he's seen it, he's uh, practiced there, and going into Laguna Seca on the final race? I think all of the drivers are very excited about Laguna Seca. They've changed some things around there. The final turn is a little bit easier. You can get on the gas to the finish line. Uh, Michael Andretti won't even think about it. All the wounds and the aches and the pains that he had coming into this race, victory lane, champagne, and the trophy takes care of all of that. If I was Jimmy Vassar right now, I'd be huddling with my crew, trying to figure out a strategy that would revolve around conservation. He showed that he can do it today, but it's still, he is the hunted, and any driver will tell you, you would rather be the hunter than the hunted. But does the collar get a little tight on Jimmy Vassar? Good question. Uh, you know, Jimmy Vassar's never been in this situation before, so it's all brand new territory for Jimmy, but he does have the advantage of having a crew that's got a wealth of experience, and I'm sure, as they've done all year, you know, they sprinted to an early lead, and they've been chipped away little by little. I think they're talking about that right now, and they'll talk about it right until the last lap a week from today. Coming into today, we all talked about Al Lancer Jr. and how he can chase Jimmy Vassar, and then you come in, and it's fuel consumption and pit strategy. Do you think... Uh Little Al's bit, Penske and uh, company made no. a bit of a mistake or not? Absolutely not. I, I think under the set of circumstances, nobody could know that there was going to be another full course yellow. And in terms of track position, that was the right move by Roger Penske. Uh, I think when you talk to, uh, to Rick Mears, I think what he was trying to say, as Bobby quite right. aptly said, was that based upon the information that they had, yeah, it was a good move. Based upon the way the race turned out, it was a bad move. But if it was me, and I think if it was Rick or, or Roger, they'd make the same move again because that's all they knew is they had to top it off and try and go. I want to talk to you, too, about Bobby Rahal because here's a guy who drove a very consistent race, and over this course, I guess the key is to stay out of trouble. He did that. Michael did that. But Bobby hasn't won yet since Nazareth in 92. It's a long time, but still consistently running well. But once again, Bobby Rahal is plowing brand new ground and new territory. He's an owner-driver. The team is brand new this year in terms of Bobby taking full ownership. They've got a bright young star with Brian Herta. Bobby Rahal has what Al Lunser Jr. calls fire in the belly, the eye of the tiger. It's back. When you talk to Bobby Rahal now, it's only a matter of time before he not only finds his way back to victory lane, but as a car owner, he puts Brian Herta into victory lane, and that'll be a first. An owner and a driver both going to victory lane, both named Rahal. Jack, it's been a pleasure working with you it's today. It's always Thank a you. lot of fun, and Thank I love you. coming to Canada, and I hope you ask me back again. Ah, uh, we sure will. Uh, Brian? All right, Bobby Unser says you have to have to be asked back, Jack, so you'll be, <laughs> you'll be asked back for Job sure. Job security. <laughs> Job security, indeed. You know, it is the seventh year for this event. Uh, I've called all these races with Bobby Unser. Hard to believe, but it gets better every year again this year, more than 70,000. And once again, as I look outside, more of that great British Columbia sunshine. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll return with a final word from here in Vancouver, the 1996 Molson Indy Vancouver. Right after this, Michael Andretti wins in Vancouver for the third time.